your home for local programming, the Cox Channel. A Kansas football tradition in July, the boys of autumn under the hot summer sun. Tonight, the 42nd annual Kansas Shrine Bowl from Lewis Field on the campus of Fort Hay State University. The top seniors in the state with one last game. East versus West, out West. The Kansas Shrine Bowl pregame show starts now. And hi, everybody. I'm Leon Liebel, along with Katie Falco from the campus of Fort Hayes State University as we get ready for the Kansas Shrine Bowl All-Star Game. And uh, along with Katie, we are getting ready almost for football, but so much more than just football to talk about tonight. But you're going to tell us a lot of stories from the sideline. Yeah, Leon, I'm very excited to be working the sideline tonight during the game. And this is the second year I've actually been a part of the Shrine Bowl. I did the pregame show last year, and I am just honored. I'm so excited to be here. We have lots of great stuff coming up in our pregame show. We'll get to hear from some of the patient and ambassadors. So really just a great opportunity for everyone involved. And also some good news for you and the players on the sideline tonight. The weather cooling off a little bit. We just hope the rains may hold for the game. But as we mentioned, it's not just about football. Probably the highlight of the week is the, the annual hospital visit where the players get to meet the kids. Yes, so the players, the cheerleaders, band members, coaches, they all got to Hayes on Thursday, and they had the hospital visit over at the campus union. And you know, it's just a great opportunity for the players to get to meet the patients that they're actually playing for, you know, hear about their life and hear about their journey in the Shriners Hospital. Whispering to, like, their friends about you. And you're like, I know you're talking about me. <laughs> you, but you're so obvious. And All the patients of Shriners Hospital have a story. I am an above the knee amputee. Whenever I was two, I was diagnosed with a vascular malformation called genuine diffuse flea big tasia of Bachenheimer. About five years ago, I got shot on accident by my dad, and I've been like through a lot of stuff, and I've had almost 20 surgeries. I was born 10 weeks early without my left arm. Nobody really knows why. So if you don't mind me asking, what did happen? Yeah, like, like specifically? Yeah. I was on a, do you know like a sea do or like a wave runner? Yeah. Or something? Yeah, so I was on it like this, and a rope caught around my arm, and I was going forward, and the rope was going this way, and just kind of pulled it off. It's their story that has helped make them who they are. I realized I wanted to do the amputation because I saw all these great athletes being, uh, disabled athletes being great athletes. I mean, they went to the Paralympics and they were running and being active when I was stuck in a wheelchair at that time. So I wanted to be just like them and show people that I could be athletic just like them. There's this article about a guy named Joe Rogers who's an assistant goalie for Notre Dame and he had one hand like me, except on his right. And so uh, we were interested in how he played goalie, so we called him and he told us that he got his glove made at Shriners Hospital, so that's how it all started. Shriners Hospital helps patients realize what their dreams are and how to pursue them. I wasn't really insecure, I was just kind of cautious about it because I didn't really know what I was able to do. But Shriners came in and like showed me what I could do and taught me a bunch of stuff. Now I do sled hockey, uh, track, um, triathlons, and uh, half marathons now. I horseback ride, I twirl the time. I'm on three other swim teams besides that. I like to knit. <laughs> the instruments I play are trumpet, guitar, and I'm, try I'm teaching myself ukulele. I snow ski and water ski. So I have this attachment and it like comes out and it's like another little mini rope that's connected to that rope. So I hold it like this. I love golf. It is like one of my biggest passions. I got varsity this year, which is pretty cool. Not only does Shriners Hospital provide medical and physical care, but it provides children with the mental and emotional strength they need to tell their story and to be who they are. This is some advice I got right after my amputation. It was things may be bad now, but things are going to get better. For me, like I started walking again and I started to be more confident in myself and with other people. So with Shriners Hospital, it, they made me realize that that saying was true. All these kids can stand up here and they can talk about what happened to them and they can explain to you how it feels to be stared at and what you can do to change that, I mean, that is really what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And what Shriners 
what the biggest thing that Shriners can do for these kids. Yeah, like before Shriners, like I was so nervous, I couldn't even talk to you guys. <laughs> that had been just weird. <laughs> my first speaking, <laughs> I cried my eyes out. I even made the football players cry. It was, it was devastating. <laughs> it's not about me, I mean, oh. us, it's not about us. It's playing for you guys. This East vs. West showdown is much bigger than the game of football. It's about these patients, their story, and their message to the world. Yeah, that's right. I hope they see that what some of these kids go through is truly amazing, and how so much they've been through, but they still have this great attitude. I know what it's like to not be able to do something, why others can ask, why can't I do that? But you can do it. It's, it's great. If you put your mindset to it, you're going to be able to do anything you ever want. Nothing is impossible. I can do everything that you can do, but I just might do it a little bit differently. You have to show people that you are different and then you are proud of it. You don't have to shy away from it. Where's my arm? Give it back. <laughs> she just actually went on a camp um, through the Salt Lake City Shriners Hospital called Unlimited. and. She came home, she had so much fun with all these other teenagers that were missing limbs, and she says to her brother, Peyton, we need to cut off your arm so you can go to this camp. And I said, there you go. She feels like it's pretty cool to be who she is. Uh, incredibly inspiring. There's uh, one of uh, the recipients tonight just uh, got a chance to score a touchdown with the help of one of the players on the East team and uh, Katie uh, again just the inspiration there it's, it's just tremendous and there we go and there's the uh, touchdown uh, the, the meeting guys these kids really had to be it. terrific yeah and for these players you saw that little sticker the I am that stands for it's not about me and it was really cool you saw the players giving that to those patients and telling them you know we know this is not about us that this is about you and they, they do get it. I talked with Coach Hessler a little bit ago, and he said that was his number one goal, is to make sure that they know who they're playing for. I don't even know if we have to do any much more in this pregame show. That's all we need right there. But we do have much more to come. And so many more events that were going on here in Hayes, at Fort Hayes State University, and in the community in large. And, of course, you, you got up early this morning and took part in a lot of these things, including a parade. Yes, I've been here since Wednesday, so <laughs> I've gotten to see a lot of things. Uh, this morning at about 10 a.m. Uh, on Main Street, they actually had a parade, and there you see some of the Shriner patients were a part of it. Uh, right there is Sydney Kendall, and she will be doing the coin toss for the game. Just a great girl. We uh, heard her story earlier. The guys were on floats, and it's just a really cool event for not just these players, not just the parents, but also the entire city of Hayes. And it is a competition, but it's great to see these guys. I think they get to meet a lot of people they played against and become friends for life, some of them. Yeah, I mean, they just met this past week, and you see them out here. They're all rallying together. It's like they're already ah, there best we go. buds. You always got to have a little car at the Shriners, don't you? Oh, so that was really exciting. And then also at about 10 o'clock right here in Lewis Stadium, uh, they had a combine which brought out um, incoming freshmen and current high school kids. Um, they did, you know, the 40. They did jumps, vertical. They had a three-cone drill. And there were about 100 people that uh, came out to that. So it's kind of cool for them. Here you see it. Uh, cool for them to see where they are, you know, the things they need to work on, especially heading into the upcoming season. And I know former uh, K-State star Mark Simino, college football Hall of Famer, also kind of in charge of this, uh, the Combine, so. You know, and they, they don't get a chance to, some of these kids, to mm -hmm. do these drills, so I think some of them are pretty nervous about it, but overall, it's just a great thing for everyone involved, Leon. And, well, you may hear it behind us, too, besides football and all that good stuff, the pageantry of high school football. We got the band and the cheerleaders. Yes, and like we said, that they were part of the hospital uh, visit on Thursday. They've been part of a lot of things. There's actually um, one of the band members out there. She's also a Shriners patient, so I'm looking forward to hope be, hopefully I'll get to catch up with her later on in the game, maybe during halftime, because uh, I know she's very honored to be a part of the band as well. And as we mentioned, there are a million terrific stories out there. And again, you're going to be on the sidelines tonight uh, working hard and bringing us all those great stories during the game. Yes, Liana, I'm very excited, and like I said, we have lots of great stuff coming up in the show. We're going to talk about the East and West camp also and kind of what the last week of practice has been like for the guys. Yeah, we have a chance now to go to meet some of the players and coaches as we visit the East and West camps. That's coming up next on the Kansas Shrine Bowl pregame show. We're back with more after this.
So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. The Shriners Hospital for Children. Love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Discover the Contour app from Cox. The app takes you to a world of personalized entertainment that can change how you watch TV. If you're a Cox TV and internet customer, it's likely you already have access to the Contour app for free. All you need is an iPad or select Android tablet and you're ready. Watch live TV and on-demand shows at home. Access TV network apps you can watch anywhere and so much more. Just download the Contour app and sign in with your Cox primary user ID and password to get started today. I went to a place just like the island. Every day is a perfect getaway. Play for the day or stay overnight. Daily admission and overnight packages are available. Coco Key is affordable fun for the entire family. Family fun for everyone. Coco Key. Water Resort. More fun, better value. Coco Key Water Resort. You have somewhere to be. Work, school, wherever. We believe life's not about where you're going, but how you get there. No matter who you are or what you do, there's a bike for that. Big Poppy Bicycle Company in the heart of Aggieville. Yeah, it's the Marine fight song. Welcome back to the Kansas Shrine Bowl pregame show. I'm Leon Lieb along with Katie Falco, and we've been talking about what's been going on all week here in Hayes, but also across the state. The players, the coaches getting ready, and like any all-star game, not a lot of time for preparation, but it is a chance to get ready to play a football game and also to get to know each other. We start with the East Camp. For more on their preparation, here's Kyle Hess. East squad, give me three. East on one, one, East. Like a fine-tuned engine, the East squad is firing in perfect rhythm. And a big reason why is the motto this team has taken on. I am, it's not about me. Whenever we get lazy, we just, he says I am. We basically just know it's for the Shriners hospitals. About raising money for these kids and putting on a great show and so that more people come into even next year's Shrine Bowl, you know, and, and you leave that legacy. With the game carrying a bigger significance than what these players were under in high school, it holds even more weight for some who already know the impact that people's generosity can have. Uh, I got a brother who has cerebral palsy and it's just, you know, it makes it feel good and makes a, it's special. It's something that, it's, it's got lasting meaning, I guess you could say. They per persevere and just all the battles they've gone through and just, just play for them and raise money for the uh, Shrine Hospital. Honestly, I didn't have much knowledge about what this game was about, but they came to my house and they explained how they're doing this for a charity event for the Shriners Hospital, and right when they said that, I was just all about it. However, make no mistake, this East team is fully focused on changing what the rest of the state thinks about them on the field. The West thinks we're soft, I guess. That's great that they've won the past couple, past couple years. I really don't care. It's amazing what these kids can absorb from, you know, when you get the best of the best, how quickly you can get some stuff in. Losing's not an option, actually. I'll go with Mitch and check for, check, put a check on the mark for a win. We got a few tricks up our sleeves. Uh, I'm not going to say anything, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just really looking forward to Saturday. It's going to be fun. Come kickoff, we'll finally get our answer. In Emporia, covering the East team for the Shrine Bowl, Kyle Haas. And thank you, Kyle. And again, the East trying to get back on the winning track. The West has kind of had the upper hand in recent years, and the West team also working out this week. They are working out a lot. So the East guys, they had two days. The West guys actually had three days. Wow. They did two hours in the morning, about an hour 15 in the afternoon, and two hours in the evening. And this is actually head coach Scott Mosier's fourth time being a part of a Shrine Bowl. He was an assistant coach last year when West won 21 to 6. But like the East, they know that this is much bigger than the game of football. Kyle has to is our high school producer at Time Warner Cable Sports Channel and also a Fort Hayes State graduate yes, has more on that. the West Squad. <laughs> you guys are so gifted. Please. That's it. Please me. You guys got all the talent in the world. Oh. You guys are playing for kids 
that have disabilities and handicaps and they fight every day every day just to walk and do normal things. The reason they're practicing for the Shrine game hasn't been lost on the West team, as the coaching staff continues to remind this year's squad of the people they're representing. It's very special. This has uh, been blessed with the, uh, the opportunity to do this four times now and have been to the, the hospital and, and seen these kids and, and I have a pretty good understanding of what this means. I, I got that early, you know, 20 years ago when I saw my, my first hospital visit. Don't take things for granted and, you know, we're all gifted out here and those guys are running around with prosthetics and just not to take you know things lightly. Make our best effort and use it to the best of our ability on the field or whatever we're doing, go 110% just to honor those kids and play the best of our ability. Coach Mosier's staff also is making sure that the West team puts out a strong showcase for the Sunflower State as he brings his all-star team together with his players calling home everywhere from Hanover to Holcomb and plenty of places in between. I think I just like bonding with the guys. That's really probably the greatest part of this so far. Some of the guys I've already like knew before from playing in different sports with them. Makes the West real unique because you got the Wichita guys, you got the little guys from Northwest Kansas and Southwest Kansas, and you know, and, and Central Kansas, and and they've never heard of some of these schools. They don't. They it's not that they don't care. They just they never heard of them before. Regardless of geography skills, come kickoff Saturday night, there will be an expectation as the last 10 years have been utter domination by the West Siders going 8-2 and two and outscoring the East 218 to 138, six times holding the East under double digits. We've got to try to go get that W and, you know, represent the West like they have in the past. I think everybody else is focused on winning, but I haven't really thought about the pressure. In the end, it's just to raise money for the Shrine Hospital, so win or lose, it's still for a good cause. Covering the West team for the Shrine Bowl in Salina, Kyle Haas. All right, Leon, well, I got the chance to talk with Coach Mosier as well earlier, and he got pretty choked up because he's also the head coach at Mead, and they actually played here at Fort Hayes uh, for the 2010 and 2012 state championship when they won. So. And he has done a tremendous job as the head coach out there in Mead. They talk about this uh, just being for, you know, raise money, but there's a little competition there. They want to continue. Oh, they want to win. I mean, they, they this is a good cause, and they know that. And it's really cool how they rally together. You mm -hmm. know, we've been talking about this the whole time. But, uh, I mean, just all around, everyone is so excited. It was so cool to get to talk to them. And they have reminded like, their guys, and they said that they will say it before they head out on the field tonight, that this is bigger than the game of football. Well, Katie, you've been a great teammate. We're going to have to let you go because you got to get ready for the sideline reporting. As we get closer to kickoff with the Kansas Shrine Bowl here at Lewis Field, there's the East team getting ready, and they're all red. We're going to hear from Mark Ewing and Stan Weber. That's coming up next right after this. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. A Shriners Hospital for Children. Love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. If you love baseball and softball, you'll love baseball savings and softballsavings.com. Find an unmatched selection of bats, clubs, balls, team, and individual apparel, and all the other accessories you'll need at warehouse pricing. Open seven days a week with extended store hours. And now, shop for all your golf and soccer needs, too. Easy to find off K96. Baseball savings is in the TGW.com warehouse located on 34th Street, just west of Webb Road. You know how it is. You're busy and on the go and don't always know when there's a message on your home phone. But Cox Digital Telephone Readable Voicemail has you covered. It converts voicemail messages on your home phone to readable text and automatically sends them to your email address. So you can check messages wherever you have email access on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Learn more with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Paw Valley Bank has been helping Topeka families grow for over 140 years, guiding you at the beginning of the journey and setting up that first savings account, helping you with that first loan and explaining what exactly is in the fine print. From working to give you free checking to discounts on consumer loans, visit one of our eight conveniently located branches throughout Topeka or online at pawvalleybank.com. Paw Valley Bank, investing in our community. From your generation to the next. 
Welcome back, everybody, to Lewis Field on the campus of Fort Hayes State University. There's the West Squad getting ready for tonight's Kansas Shrine Bowl game. I'm Leon Lebel here on the pregame show. Kickoff for tonight's game just after 7 o'clock and bringing you tonight's action. The longtime TV voice of the Kansas Shrine Bowl, Mark Ewing, and a former Shrine Bowl star himself, the old Goddard Lion, <laughs> Stan Weber. Let's head upstairs, Mark and Stan. That was a great introduction, Leon. And if my math is correct, Stan, this is our 15th consecutive call together, which it makes us veteran sportscasters, uh, to put it uh, politely. But it's something we always look forward to, and this is certainly an event. Hey, back in 1980, do you remember getting the call to say, hey, you were a Kansas Shrine Bowl All-Star? What did it mean to you? I do. Uh, my mother called me to the phone because we didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> we did. So uh, someone's <laughs> calling you, and I, I went and answered the phone, and they mentioned that I had been selected to play in the Kansas Shrine Bowl. And what an honor it was because I was a sports fan I, when I was young. I watched these guys on TV. I went to live high school games when I could, read about them in the paper, listened on the radio. And the fact that I was going to get a chance to play with these players that I heard all about across the state, it was an amazing honor. And really the legion and the honor roll of those who've been Kansas Shrine Bowl All-Stars is very long. Back in 2011, for example, Ben Haney, who had a great career at Kansas out of Hutchinson High School and is now getting a shot at the NFL. And uh, Cody Whitehair, who's uh, the captain of K-State, along with your son, played in that 2011 game. And he's out of Abilene, so I know it was very exciting. Yeah, it's fun to see these kids develop and go on. Heck, Barry Sanders played in this game and then ended up being one of the great all-time Hall of Fame running backs. But Cody Whitehair is in Dallas with the Big 12 preseason meetings with him and my son Stanton, both captains for K-State. And to see these young men grow and gain weight and strength and confidence is a lot of fun. Those guys are ready for the college season. But we're ready to start off all of football. That's what I love about the Shrine Bowl, the first football game of the fall right here. And would you agree that, like the other previous Shrine Bowl All-Stars, this 2015 group, they're very talented. They probably won't realize what a great week this was until several years later. They won't. The friendships will last forever. They did realize that something different is going on when they were able to visit with sh kids who have gone through the Shrine Hospital. And when that happened, that always changes your mindset. Because at first you think you're an all-star football player. Then you realize you're doing it for a greater co cause. One of the all-time great causes that I ever was associated with, and we're lucky enough to still be, and these kids are learning about, is strong legs run so weak legs can walk. That's the Kansas Shrine Bowl motto. Well, Stan, I look forward to doing this call along with you. It's always the same, but a little bit different. I'm always surprised on the stars that who do emerge from this. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I talked to the kids before the game and said, uh, I get older, you stay the same age. So <laughs> here we go again. Some high school seniors ready to go to college, and we're going to talk about their football skills today. All right, Leon, let's head back down on the field to you. Thank you, Stan. We are looking forward to some football tonight, but first, more of the pregame shows still to come, including a special visit with a special guest, the president of Fort Hayes State University, coming up next, the Kansas Shrine Bowl pregame show. More after this. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. A Shriners Hospital for Children loves a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Everyone has a happy dance. Discover yours when you get a mortgage from Capital Federal. We're right here local. And that means a convenient loan process. And you can meet your loan officer face to face. See why Cat Fed has been true blue for over 120 years. Can't stop dancing, feeling true blue. Discover your happy dance with a mortgage from Capital Federal. Attorney Gary Patterson, helping you is what we do. Oh my. I'm with the insurance company, and we need you to sign right here, right now. Insurance? Talk to my lawyer. Not again. <laughs> wow, what a great app. It's the best phone call you can make. Call 687-2400. Lewis Toyota is going to have one summer giant used car blowout for 12 days and 12 days only. Prices will be clearly marked in every windshield at huge discounts with our used car blowout prices. 
All prices to move, savings you can see. No games, no gimmicks, no hassles. Giving you top dollar for your trade. No payments till Labor Day, no money down, and interest rates as low as 1.9%. Our summer giant used car blowout for 12 days and 12 days only at Lewis Toyota. I-470 in Fairlawn and Topeka, right on the corner and always right on the price. And welcome back, everybody, to Lewis Field Stadium on the campus of Fort Hayes State University. I'm Leon Liebel here on the Kansas Shrine Bowl pregame show. We're getting closer to kickoff, but before that, a very special guest, our gracious host here for the Shrine Bowl this year, the president of Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Mirda Martin. And thanks for having us. No, thank you for being here. It is a pleasure and a privilege to host the Shrine Bowl here at Fort Hayes State University. So welcome. You have not been here very long yourself, only no. just a little over a year. Just a little over a year. So far, a lot going on with the Shrine Bowl today. Yes, it the is. Parade, and I assume you've enjoyed yourself. Yes, absolutely. Actually, it started earlier on this week. We brought some of the children uh, to our Sternberg Museum. You know, we have uh, the only paleontology museum here in the state and um, they spent the day out there and uh, it was a wonderful event to see the faces of children that otherwise wouldn't have that experience. And uh, you, you enjoy all the events yourself too? Yes, absolutely. Now, as we mentioned, you haven't been here very long at no. Fort Hayes State. Uh, your, your impression so far, because you've really come from a different, Just a a different world a little bit. Well, you know, only 1,700 miles. <laughs> What's that? Um, yes, it's, you know, I've been here exactly a year, and it's been a wonderful experience. Um, when I, I, as we were talking earlier, I was born in, in Cuba and then grew up in Spain. Went to school at Duke University where I met my husband, who's a Virginian. Uh -huh. And we dated the four years there and then got married right after we graduated. And I lived there for the past 33 years. But uh, something happened very funny that never happens to anybody, and that is my children grew up. Imagine <laughs> that. And so they left, and we started to look for a home. And we were wanting to find a home where our values were the values of the university, where people did the right thing because it was the right thing to do. And that's how I came to Fort Hay State. And I will tell you, I have not been disappointed, quite the opposite. I have just been so thankful to have found not just a university, but more importantly, a family. And you mentioned you graduated from Duke. Yes. you got to be a basketball fan. I right? am, but I no longer root for anybody <laughs> other than the Tigers. <laughs> and they got some good basketball tradition here as well. Yes, we do. And we've been very fortunate. Uh, we're very proud of our uh, student scholars. Uh, year after year, they outperform themselves both on the field and off the field. And my philosophy about education is, you know, we're here to give our children not just an education um, to give them wisdom but more importantly to make sure that they understand how to use what they've learned here to make a difference uh, unto the human condition and this is why this shrine ball is I so just, important just wanted to ask you that this kind of all connects it together. all connects together exactly right you know it's it's what good is knowledge if you don't use it to help others uh, what good is is living if you don't impart the, the joie de vivre onto mm -hmm. others and that's what the Shriners do and that's what we do here at Fort Hay State University we teach our children to pass it forward and it just happens that this week we've passed it forward to a very 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 worthy cause uh, the Shriners Ball exemplifies the ability to give back to those who need it most uh, we've been very fortunate to have the Shriners here for the past three times mm -hmm. uh, in since 2010 as you probably well know they've raised over two and a half million dollars all directed to Shriners Children's Hospital to help those children who and those parents who would not otherwise have the opportunity to to seek that medical excellence. Well, so many great things going on here in Hayes at yes, Fort Hayes State. And absolutely. now we're getting ready for a football game. So we are you excited are. about that? And oh, yes. And, and uh, um, Chris Brown, our coach, has already started um, um, looking around. And um, football season <laughs> is, is a wonderful season at Fort Hayes, as is uh, basketball season, as is baseball season, as is softball season, as is every season. Well, you got a great place to play the games. Okay. Enjoy the football game tonight. We are. Dr. Mirta Martin, the president of Fort Hayes State University. We're almost ready for kickoff here yes, at Fort absolutely. Hayes State. East versus West. Coming up, Mark Ewing and Stan Weber will have the call. I'm Leon Lebel. You've been watching the Kansas pregame, the Kansas Shrine Bowl pregame show. Enjoy the game, everybody. Thank you. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. 
A Shriners Hospital for Children loves a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Your digital lifestyle means you have a lot of digital stuff, but what do you do with all of it? With Cox High Speed Internet, you have an easy way to safely store, backup, access, and share your stuff anytime, at home or on the go. It's called Cloud Drive, a free cloud storage solution for all your stuff. Get started today. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Spring brings new beginnings and new opportunities. Now you can get both at Briggs Buick GMC Manhattan. Start your day ahead in a 2015 Buick Encore for only $1.99 a month. Stay ahead with a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot and Encore is an IIHS top safety pick. Or drive a 2015 GMC Terrain with a spring opportunity price of only $1.99 a month. Spring is here and so are the savings at Briggs Buick GMC Manhattan. And for more specials, visit BriggsAuto.com backslash specials. We drive, to work, to the big game, to a weekend with the girls, to our favorite destinations, to our families. We'll get you there and back home. If you ever drive the Kansas Turnpike, ever is enough. Order your free sticker K-Tag today at myktag.com to save on tolls and save on time. History on the gridiron in the great state of Kansas is ingrained with the legends who have been able to call themselves Shrine Bowl All-Stars. Tonight, the state's hometown heroes are set once again to showcase their skills in a return trip to the game's most western venue. The 2015 showdown is on as East meets West. As solid as the limestone walls which outline the campus of Fort Hayes State University, one of the most tradition-rich games in the Sunflower State, turns 42 years old as East faces the West All-Stars in the Kansas Shrine Bowl. And greetings, folks, alongside Stan Weber. I'm Mark Ewing. Welcome to Hayes, and welcome to the telecast once again. We're always excited about this, and there's so many things to talk about. But first and foremost, let's talk about the game's purpose. This is a game that you play for goodwill, and that underlines everything else. Yeah, the whole state comes together. There are so many Shriners from all over who help contribute in a lot of ways. But the money that's earned from this game is used for the St. Louis Hospital and Shriners Hospitals around the world, and these players are able to attract fans to watch on television come to the game and that's how the money's earned meanwhile this game is very competitive and there's several reasons why yes there is one of the things that you get into is that both teams are all-stars so you've got high level players on both teams there are no mismatches for coaches to analyze and the other thing is it's really hard for a team to come together and be a fine-tuned machine therefore there are some inefficiencies on a both sides which allow them to gravitate back to having a close game well the east team they're the visitors in this uh, grouping and when I look at the East team, I think they got great speed and combination of size. Uh, they ought to be pretty potent. They really should. They're going to run a pistol offense. They're going to line up in that shotgun and spread their receivers out, look like they're going to pass all night long. But the fact is they'd rather run the ball than pass, even though they got a lot of good receivers. Meanwhile, the West team always considered the favorite because they've owned this series in recent years, but they're going to be on the option attack. they got an attacking defense, and they're very capable. Yeah, the West defense has a good front line, but on offense, it's a single wing. This is old school. Watch this offense. It's unique, not something you see normally on Friday, Saturday, or Sundays in football season. This will be interesting to see how the East reacts to this offense that the West is going to run. Are well, you ready to go? I think we are. Uh, football season's here. Kansas the Shrine Bowl getting set to go. What will happen in this one? The next chapter of the game is about to unfold. Introductions to our All-Stars are ahead. East faces West in the 2015 Kansas Shrine Bowl. It's on the way next. Home 
It's where we feel the most comfortable. It's family, friends, and memories. The Dunans have made Great Bend not only their home, but their livelihood. And the heritage of Dunan GMC is passed through three generations. We take pride in our community and are honored to serve all those who make it their home as well. Since 1955, Dunan GMC has been here. And we're going to be here for your grandchildren's children because we're all family. It's time to come home to Dunan GMC, where you're always treated like family and where a handshake still means something. Why should you choose Pittsburgh State University? Nationally recognized academics. Student-friendly tuition. Incredible athletics. The amazing campus. Whatever you're looking for in a university, you'll find it here. It's why you belong. It's why you belong at Pittsburgh State University. The mattress liquidation event of the year is going on now at Z Sleep Mattress Center of Hutchison, located at 526 East 30th Avenue. Save up to 70% on mattresses, bedding, and accessories. Twins as low as 77 bucks and queen sets as low as $98 per piece. Inventory is wall-to-wall -wall and stacked to the ceiling. It all has to go. No reasonable offers will be refused. Interest-free and no credit check financing is available on site. Hurry in today and take advantage of this year's largest savings. Limited inventory is available, and when it's gone, it's gone. Z Sleep Mattress Center liquidation going on now. Don't miss out. Well, from Oakley to Overland Park and from Linden to La Crosse and uh, all those places in between, the honor roll of high school football stars are set to roll out. All city, all league, and all state standouts from border to border have come to Hayes to represent their hometowns one more time. That includes uh, two of the stars that we'll look at tonight. Let's start with the East High Schools, rather the Topeka High Schools, Alec Beatty. He's a veteran quarterback that will certainly lead the East team on offense. He's very good. He is a very good athlete, number one, and as a quarterback, he can do all things. If they want him to run the football, he has the capability to do that. 4.0 GPA. Oh, he plays in the marching band and in the concert band, and he can <laughs> throw the football, too. He's a good guy to be a leader. Yeah. Alec Beatty from Topeka will be the East quarterback. Yeah, we should mention great athletes, also good citizens. Meanwhile, West, Tyler Burns, the West offense will go through Wichita. Trinity's talented back. If the West is to win tonight, Tyler Burns will have to have a big game. Tyler Burns' brother Morgan played in the 2011 Shrine Bowl tonight. He's going to be carrying the football for the West. He will be taking part in one of the most honorable and exciting events that the sports landscape of the Sunflower State has to offer. We are set to embrace the 42nd annual Kansas Shrine Bowl. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. The Shriners Hospital for Children loves a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Hey there, Jeff Horning out here at Priority Motorsports offering a selection of cars, trucks, and bikes that you're not going to find just anywhere. All the way from predictable and practical to the very rare, hard to find, like this all-new slingshot. Or take a look at this 2015 Z06 convertible. Hey, there might be three of them available in the United States, and we've got one of them. So come down and visit the store today, 5817 East Kellogg, or check us out online at pmsports1.com. Transportation for every generation. It's time to give the E-Series from John Deere a good look. Start with the 1E, the only tractor its size with a drive-over mower deck. Or the 3E-Series, versatile, budget-friendly, and built to last. And the 5E Utility Tractor, a workhorse on the ranch, farm, or worksite. The E-Series, durability measured in decades, unexpected low price. Surprise yourself. Come size one up today. Stop by Great Bend Farm Equipment or visit gbfarm.com to find a John Deere compact utility tractor that is perfect for you. This is my contour. It knows there are lots of sides. To me, we each have our own tastes. And of course, our own sensibilities. What about my stuff? Fortunately, contour can record all our shows. Up to six at the same time. So we all get what we want. That takes brains. Uh, someone say brains. That's why contour is TV just for me. Record six shows at once for the many sides of you. Only with contour. 
West won the toss is set to receive. We've had our eyes on the sky and the weather situation. Let's head on the sideline. Sideline reporter Katie Falco joins us with the latest. Katie. All right, thanks, Mark. Well, yeah, all week we've been preparing for temperatures in the triple digits. Right now, it looks like it's about low 80s. There's been a little bit of light rain, but seems like that's passed by. I did hear that there was lightning strikes within 10 miles, but it looks like we're going to get going here. And if there is lightning, they will have to postpone the game, but they will go ahead and play in the rain. But guys, I'm really excited to be on the sidelines tonight. Hopefully, uh, I'll get to talk to some of the patient ambassadors, and I'll look forward to talking to players as the game goes on. As Katie can tell us, if it rains here, they'll continue to play but if there is lightning even if it's not raining they will stop action and they will slow it down for 30 minutes so we're going to watch that meanwhile we're set to kick off here back to receive for the west team chain and carter um, on the receiving unit for the west special teams and kicking off this is dawson swinehart the 2015 kansas swine bowl is underway return coming to the 10 yard line at the 20 25 block inside still on his feet and hustles down the 30 yard line on the return nice job by carter to keep on his feet and a nice place for the west to begin on the 30 yard line so the west will go to work behind the quarterback colton howell he's out of wichita bishop carroll high school he goes 6'2, 205 pounds the butler bound quarterback around the golden eagles multiple offense to perfection steps in as the tailback in this single wing setup how led Bishop Carroll to two state championships, 834 yards, 22 rushing touchdowns, through the air, 1,531 yards, 19 touchdowns, five interceptions. But Colton Howell and his offense back at Bishop Carroll High School, they run a little bit more shotgun, sometimes the spread. So this will certainly be a uh, first time look for him. And in fact, the snap goes to the tailback, which in this case is the fullback, and that is. Tyler Burns of Wichita Trinity. So we're going to get a chance to run an offense. This is an offense stand that these guys don't, many of them don't normally run on their high school teams. Well, it's very unique, and one of the most unique aspects to it is its unbalanced line. So there'll be two guys to the side of the center, let's say the left side on that first play, and the second one is not an offensive lineman. He's actually a tight end. So line up on the right side. You see number four right there? He's actually eligible to go up for a pass. So they got an extra lineman powering over to the left side. Certainly gives the East defense a lot to think about. Here's Hal. Hal getting a snap, moves forward five yards, moving close to about the 38, close to the 39-yard line, and a pickup of about five yards. Let's take a look at this offense. Here's what Stan's talking about, that offset line. Yeah, you see the center, and there are two guys to his right, and there are four guys to his left. Now what you've got there is an overloaded side, the left side. That's most likely where they're going to go. But the thing that really gets tricky is a guy who's lined up only two places away from the center can slip out and go out for a pass. It really is hard for the defense to keep track of number four, Sean Sloan Baker. Snap is to Burns, and Burns is hit hard. In fact, his helmet pops off at about the 40-yard line. What a, what, boy, that was an unbelievable uh, hit inside, short of that first down marker, which rests at the 40. He's about the 39 and making the, the big hit for the East team. That was Derek McGreevy, the Topeka Hayden and linebacker. It was his helmet who popped off. He did not get blocked. He worked his way through the line. Derek McGreevy makes a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle on the play, but a blocking assignment missed by the West team. Puts a situation of fourth and one, and the question becomes right away, will Scott Mosier go for fourth and one in his own territory? There he is, the head coach of the Mead Buffaloes, also serves as the school's principal. He's on the west sideline and recognized off the field for his leadership abilities. Fourth time on the staff, first time as a head coach for the West team. Fourth down and one, the West inside their own territory is going to go for it. Howell now in motion as the left side of the line moves to the right. And here's Howe, trying to look for some yardage. The East team's going to get him down. Blake Middleton, excuse me, check that. Dylan Smith, the Bonner Springs linebacker, in on the stop. And the East team is going to take over after a stop on fourth and one. Great penetration by the East. You see the West switch from left to right to change the power. But there are so many guys in the backfield. Everyone keeps their body square. You see the lineman taking the charge of the offensive lineman on. And it is just a mass tackle. There is no place to go. And the East turns the football over on four downs and gives their offense great field position. So Alec Beatty of Topeka High puts his offense to work. This will be a different look for him. A six foot, 170 pounder, 4.0 quarterback of his GPA. And this gives us to Tony Barksdale. So you got a all Centennial League backfield. Barksdale's on a Shawnee Heights. 
which is in Tecumseh, which is near Topeka. And I've heard that Barksdale's had a good week. And that's a nice pickup of about six yards. And they're quickly, quickly back to the line of scrimmage. We'll call it a pickup of five, second down and five for the East team. They're at the 33-yard line of the West team. And snap is to Beatty. Here's Barksdale fighting off the crease. He fights off one blocker, but doesn't get to the third, making the stop. On the far side of the West team, that was Willie Edwards from Wichita East who comes back from his cornerback position to make the stop after a gain of about one. That was a good tackle after a break of tackle by Tony Barksdale Jr., a very explosive running back. But both teams are very happy with their defensive fronts. So we're going to see while both teams run the football, will it be effective doing it down after down? The East with their first third down scenario of the ball game. And again, Beatty. About four yards behind center, gives to Barksdale. Barksdale dances inside, and he's get the 28-yard line, does so, down to the 27, and it appears that the East team has converted on their third down and about four. Good power by Tony Barksdale. It looked like he could have been tackled short of the first down on the zone read to the inside, but there you see the first tackle missed. The second tackle was made, but not before he spun far enough far down the field to get a first down. First down and 10 for the East team at the 32-yard line. Beatty with the snap. This time he's going to keep it in the option, and he's wrapped up, brought down inside, making penetration with the West team. That's Blake Richmeyer out of Holcomb, the 6'2", 220-pound linebacker, who made the right read and got to the quarterback. Yes, he did. On the slant, 25, 20-yard 20 line. He needed to get to the 7, to get to the 7, get to the team. Actually, was held up by his own man. His own man. West of hanging in there, Dakota Wolf in for the West team. We talked about the spread formation and the pistol looking like they want to pass every down, but the fact is the East believes in their running game, their offensive line, and Tony Barksdale. So they run the draw, knowing that they probably weren't going to be thinking about a field goal. They thought of it as a two-down situation. They made nine yards of it right there, and now they still have three long yards to go for on fourth down. Would be about a 37-yard field goal were they to go for it. It's going to go for it on fourth down instead. Here's Beatty, the tight end the right side, and a three-receiver look, the top portion of your screen, single receiver down the near side. Here's that option offense. Beatty, first down, 15-yard line, still on his feet, and he's brought down, wrapped up the 13-yard line, only needed three yards, got five instead, and Beatty, Keeps the football and gets a first down for the East team. There you see his versatility running the option. He was able to keep the football around the right side. Good blocking over there. Allowed him to be secure. He picked up the first down very easily and turned it into a seven-yard gain. You don't see the option too much nowadays. A lot more passing offenses. But well run and a fourth down conversion for the East. The West couldn't convert on their fourth down. So here we go. First down. And here's Barksdale. Spins forward 10-yard line. Gets a pickup of about three yards. And what do you think of Barksdale so far? I like his, his spin moves. He's tough to tackle. He always keeps on the move. I think he's physical. <laughs> That's the main thing that you think about. 1,923 yards last year. 32 touchdowns on his way to Coffeyville junior college and he is a physical back he also has very good speed so here's your spread look four receivers single back is Barksdale and Barksdale is gonna get the football five sprint to the end zone it looks like a touchdown east and it is east is on the board first in this 42nd Kansas Shrine Bowl on what was a 10-yard sprint to the end zone by Tony Barksdale jr. 
Good start for the East. A team that has only won one of the last nine games. Now, this East team has nothing to do with the past, but it's still something that's talked about from year to year. The coaches talk about the previous history of the Shrine Bowl. The East squad knew that they had to come in and set the tone early. They do it on defense, forcing a four and out, and then drive the football quickly 37 yards, convert a fourth down, and what a power run of 10 yards by Tony Barksdale, Jr. Dawson Swinehart from Linden in for the extra point. And the point after is good. So seven on the board for the East team who takes advantage after stopping the West team on fourth down and one. And Beatty led the charge and Tony Barksdale did the finish. A great block by the left guard, Cooper Allen, along with the center. Watch 71, the left guard, knock his guy back and then turn and make sure there's no way that they could grab on to Tony Barksdale Jr. He's able to take it in right through the middle of the offensive line. But Beatty with the six carries on the way to the end zone, 39 yards total, and that's how the scoring drive looks for the E squad as the E steps up, nine plays, 38 yards, took under four minutes, and Barksdale's seven-yard touchdown run to the end zone puts the East up by a score of seven to nothing. So looking for a little confidence. We know in this game, confidence is always kind of the turning point. The East has it early on. Well, the East coaching staff led by Harry Hester talked about how this team has come together, how they have been perfect citizens. Everyone who's had a chance to meet them throughout this week has commented on how polite the players are off the field. And then on the field, they have We believe, so we scored after that. And you've been with this team over the past week. What has this experience been like for you? Oh, great. I love my team. I want to, you know, switch for the world. So we're here. We're ready to play. All right. Thank you so much, Tony. And Mark, I'll send it back up to you. Yeah, Tony Barksdale, Jr., 32 touchdowns for Shawnee Heights. Meanwhile, on the field, third down and five. And the East team defensively just came up with another big play and a long conversion. And it looks like this time the West team's going to punt away. Let's take a look at the replay. And the East just got to the ball carrier. Yeah, number 31, Dylan Smith, kept outside leverage. Turned the running back, Colton Howe, up into the line of scrimmage where he had no chance. Three and out, and the West is punting. Punt comes from the 43. Scheduled punter is Tyler Harris of Andover Central and a good punt as the West team downs it about the 20 yard line. So East has done what they wanted to do defensively. They ran that 4-3 to Pittsburgh bound defensive end Ned Bingaman of Shawnee Mission South in there leading the way. We've seen heard from Derek McGreevy and so far East defense maybe a bit of a surprise handling that West 
that potent West offense so far. You no, know, the physical front has set the tone. They've not been driven off the line of scrimmage yet. And the linebackers have had three runs. You saw Dylan Smith on the replay there getting up into the backfield. How about the fourth down play on the first possession? Number 24, Derek McGreevy was in the backfield. So, so far that East defensive line is just keeping things so clean for the linebackers that they're able to run through and make tackles. Five receivers set, empty house backfield for Beatty as he comes to the line, first down and 10 for the East squad. The drive will begin on their own 19 yard line working against that West defense. A little receiver screen, the pass is caught. West defensively did a nice job to get to the, the receiver who was Jace Freeman. Freeman, the 6'2", 175 pounder out of Silver Lake was open on the top side of your screen and made the play. One of the guys that I like to talk about is any player who isn't playing football after this. He's going to play baseball and has an academic scholarship to Butler Junior College. So this is his last game tonight. There are a number of players who are going off to the universities or colleges, not playing football. I know how much they're going to enjoy this last opportunity. Pick up with six yards on the pass play. And here's Beatty looking at his wristband, trying to get the play. Again, four receiver set this time. Tony Barksdale Jr. back in the backfield for the East squad on what is now a second down and four from the 25 yard line. Beatty keeps it, pulls it out of the pocket of Barksdale. This time he's met hard up the middle and making the play for the West squad. Looked like Blake Richmeyer of Holcomb at 6'2", 220 pounds. When he hits you, you will feel it. That's our very physical linebacker for the West squad. He is physical, but that play was just defense perfectly the best. Watch number 87, Braden Burlew take the running back. He has his assignment. Boom, got him, and I got the quarterback. Didn't matter if he handed it off or kept it. They weren't going to gain any yardage. That's exactly what the West defense with defensive coordinator Randall Zimmerman from Junction City wants. A nice tackle, creating a third down. A little bit of a wing T set. Levi Weirich in the ball game. Bark still has it. Spins away from trouble. Needs to get to the 29. And he's brought down hard. Brought down. Got away from one tackler. But defensively, number nine, who is Brendan Johnson of Wichita Northwest, stuck with it and brought down the, the ball carry. Looks like the East is going to have to punt. Yeah, good job. The second tackler getting there and making a tackle, and the West defense needing to step up, make a play. After the punt, they forced the East to punt right away. Short by two yards. Good one-on-one -on -one tackle by safety, Brendan Johnson. So the East team will punt. The scheduled punter is Dawson Swinehart, who will also do the kicking duties for the East team. Gets plenty of protection and a pretty good punt away. West isn't going to try to return it. They're just going to take the bounce here, and the East team is going to down it. Let it roll just a little bit further down the 37-yard line. Downfield for the East team. Thatcher Horak on special teams makes the play, and the West team will take over. So on those two possessions by both the East and West, third down stops. Both teams had to punt it away, but the East leads here 7-0 inside two minutes to go in the first quarter. Well, the East had the momentum and have the lead. It was important for the West defense to get good field position by stopping the East right away. They do that and give the football back to their offense to start the third possession of the night for the West squad. They're yet to get a first down. So here's the West team. Let's see if they can get a first down on this possession. Here's Burns. Burns, 40-yard line on the right side. The ball was loose, but the officials quickly step in and notify everybody, including the crowd, that the ball was down, even though the ball shook loose and pick up of about three yards. So defensively for this E squad with that 4-3, we talked about Derek McGreevy and Ned Bingham and Shawnee Mission West, Isaiah Macklin heads up the secondary. So the East on paper looks pretty good. But to take a look at this one more time, did Tyler Burns hold on to it? We don't have instant replay. So when the ball comes loose and there's a fumble, wow. which there was, we don't yeah. get a chance to review it. Now the key thing is, it looks like number 70, Colton Wagner, had the football along with an East defender. Ty goes to the offense, so it really doesn't matter. 40-yard line, Colton Howe back to pass, looking for a receiver, got one, open. But the pass is overthrown, streaking downfield, looking like Lane Bieberly of Central Plains, a 6'2", 165-pound speedster, got behind the East defense, but the pass was overthrown. And a third down coming up. After eight straight runs by the West, they finally drop back and throw the football. And you got a quarterback who knows how to do that. Slight movement to the right, even under pressure, getting hit by Dylan Smith. He got the football away, but slightly overthrew Lane Burbilly. Missed opportunity for the West. If that would have been a little shorter, they would have had a walk-in well, touchdown. Good little uh, play action there. Meanwhile, two receivers set to the near side. One receiver top portion of your screen. Colton Howe, he can throw the football. He did it for Bishop Carroll for a couple of years and very effectively. Third down and long for the West team. Howell back to pass, looking for a receiver. 
Looked one way. Now he's surrounded. Gets away from defender. Still has it. 40-yard line. He needed to get up to the 47-yard line. So the East team has made a stop once again. And the East squad defensively brought down a quarterback who's very good on the scramble in Colton Howe. And the West team's got to punt this away again. Great team defense by the West. Three possessions, no first downs. Everybody is doing everything right. The secondary coverage is very good on that play and there's all kinds of pressure even though he dodged three different tacklers guess what here comes another wave two four six seven eight guys are there when the quarterback goes down with the sack well that was impressive i'm sure coach hester is pleased about that his defense is rising to the occasion up a touchdown meanwhile we have a timeout on the field on this fourth down scenario and that was a team timeout so the East calls timeout. They work a ton on special teams. And Harry Hester uh, is a first time Shrine Bowl head coach. Last year as an assistant was the only other time he's been able to coach in the Shrine Bowl. But he talked about his players coming together. Uh, this group actually went out to Dynamic Disc. Jeremy Rusco owns Dynamic Disc. He's an ex Shrine Bowl player. And the players went out and they played disc golf. <laughs> they had a scramble. <laughs> With a four-person scramble, they each had a putter and they had a driver. If, you, if you've ever played Frisbee golf, you know there's yeah. all kinds of different Frisbees right. you use. Each player got one that said that it's a Shrine Bowl one that they could keep for the putter, and they also got a driver to throw longer distance. Now, they kept those smaller ones so they have a momento from that team activity. A lot of them don't have the driver, though. A lot of them ended up in the water. <laughs> Just like if you so play bad drives, they lost. They had to bar off it. So they did a four-person scramble, had a lot of fun, and the East team really seemed to come together. They also had this ping-pong tournament. These guys right. love playing ping-pong. Oh, yeah. They thought they were pretty good. There's a couple students that walked in from Emporia State, and these students said, hey, we'll play against ping-pong. You know, two against two, team, <laughs> team ping-pong. They played everybody on the team and wiped them all out. <laughs> so these, the humble. Whoa. Uh, whoa. They got, they were just in awe. You're going, how do those guys do that? And they lost every ping pong game. So it's still a team building activity because they all lost. Worth noting the game uses 12 minute quarters. It is governed by high school federation rules as this punt gets away. And a good one to get a bounce out of bounds to the 25 yard line. So the West punts the ball away. And the East is going to take over. The largest enrollment school among all these schools is Wichita East who is represented by Willie Edwards there. They have 2,301 students. Meanwhile, the smallest enrollment school, Axel's Andrew Feldkamp, Axel has 62 students. And that's really the neat part about this game, Stan. Small school, large school, on the field together. Yeah, you see every class, and there is always someone selected, one or two players who play eight-man football. And what an opportunity for those kids to see guys who've come from 6A schools and play 11-man football with them in this all-star game. Tristan Spear changed the quarterback. He makes a pass play, and a pass is complete. Far sideline, 30-yard line. So Tristan Spear out of Troy High School, 5'10", 205-pounder. He's headed to Highland Community College, and he's in calling signals here for the East team. Do you know that Tristan was selected from this game, for this game, by the media as a defensive tackle? He played quarterback and defensive tackle in high school. They thought when he walked into camp he'd be a defensive tackle, and instead he ends up being the second string quarterback. He can throw the football too. Shows you how talented they are. Here's the first Barksdale, halfback pass, wide open downfield. The catch is made by Dalton Schoen. He's tackled from behind the three yard line, brought down by Willie Edwards, but a big hitter from the East team just before the change of the quarter as Tony Barksdale Jr. goes downfield and Dalton Schoen makes the catch for the East team. How about a 68 yard pass, a halfback pass, fake the option, and then Barksdale, what a perfect throw, put air under it, and down there catching the football is Dalton Schoen, who has the Kansas high school record, over 350 yards receiving in a game against Bishop Meage High School when he was at Blue Valley Northwest this season. And he shows you catching the ball here. Great throw, big play for the East. First and goal, three seconds to go, first quarter. Heavy set in, whistles blow. Was there some movement along the line? The clock showing zero. There was three prior to the play. And the break is, we're going to have a break right now, so hold your horses. The East team is going to have it. We come back at the West three-yard line. East is in control so far and threatening to score again. East leads West at the 42nd Kansas Shrine Bowl All-Star Game. So, what is love? Love is being independent. 
Love is dancing. The Shriners Hospital for Children loves a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Ryan Kirchhoff here with Virtus Motor Company. At Virtus Motor, we believe where you buy your next car is just as important as what kind of car you buy. That's why we all work together to be the best dealer you can work with during and after the sale. It starts with the way we train our sales staff to exceed the customer's needs. Then we follow up by offering service for your new car to keep your vehicle running smooth for as long as you own it. Come in today because the dealership makes all the difference or check us out online at BurtisMotor.com and remember, we are the dealer you can count on. The dictionary defines performance as the ability to perform. Here at Performance Tire and Wheel, we make sure that your vehicle is performing at its best. We're a family owned and operated business and the largest Cooper dealer in Northeast Kansas. For a limited time only, get up to a $70 Visa gift card when you buy a set of new qualifying Cooper tires, built not just for the way you drive, but the way you live. For routine maintenance, auto repairs, or a new set of Cooper tires, visit us at either of our two Topeka locations. This is my contour. It knows there are lots of sides. me, we each have our own tastes. And of course, our own sensibilities. What about my stuff? Fortunately, Contour can record all our shows. Up to six at the same time. So we all get what we want. That takes brains. Uh. Someone say brains. That's why Contour is TV just for me. Record six shows at once for the many sides of you, only with Contour. First down and goal at the three yard line. Levi Wyrick has been brought in as the East team in this first and goal situation. Right behind him is Tony Barksdale Jr. A big heavy set for the East squad. They're trying to add on to their one touchdown lead. Wyrick mishandles. The West has a chance to get it. The West has it. The West has it on a missed snap at the three yard line. And defensively, the West comes through. The East misses a huge opportunity. And what a play by the West squad. Looks like number 30, Blake Richmeyer, who's already had his presence felt in this ball game, comes through with a big play. The West needed something to slow down the East after a long touchdown possible catch and a halfback pass. Remember, they tackled him at the two-yard line. How important was that after you see this play right here? Ball a little bit high, the quarterback running toward the line of scrimmage. Levi, Levi Wyrick, remember, this is his first play of the game. It's pretty nervous to step in yeah. for your first play and try to run the ball near the goal line. Everything squeezed. He fumbles the football. The West is all over it, and they get the first turnover of the game. Well, that may have been a big spark of momentum for the West team who needed it. Takes over first down and 10, and then moved to the outside. Now inside, here's Tyler Burns at the 15-yard line, a pickup of about three yards for the West squad. West, in their single-wing offense, besides Colton Howe, the West has Andales, Hunter Knobloch, Tyler Burns of Wichita Trinity, Trinity, Tyler Harris of Andover Central, Chayden Carter of Augusta, that represents about an 8,000 yard backfield plus all those touchdowns. So the fact that the East shut out West and the fact that West has no first downs in 10 plays is really almost a mystery at this point. Well, they're trying to get them off guard. They're moving their whole line from power left to power right. Inside of that Colton Howell, Colton Howell's met up front by the West, uh, def rather the East defense, like Isaiah Macklin in there, and Derek McGreevy, as well as Wyatt Hendricks. Hendricks from Topeka Seaman, started since his freshman year, named to the Topeka top 11, makes the stop on Colton Howe, and had a third down play for the West team. And again, the West has not, not converted a third down, do not have a first down. We'll hand it this to this game. East defense, because they're going against an offense that very few of these players have ever seen in their career, in grade school, or during their high school career, single wing, and yet they've been flawless on the defensive side. Here's Burns, Howe. Howe keeps it, looking to pass, looking for a receiver, has one open, catch is made, 30 yard line, up to the 33 yard line, catch is made by Hunter Knobloch, who came from the left side of that offense, found himself open, and guess who has a first down for the first time in this ball game, the West team. Well, great composure by Colton Howe, moving to his left, he looked over there, and then brought it back away from the pressure while getting hit. Saw that the linebacker was up close and he could drop the ball over the top. And Hunter Knobloch is there to catch the football. And the West finally converts 
on third down and gets their first first down of the game here in the second quarter. This time Howell, no company behind him. Burns in motion. Howell keeps it, gets a block from Burns up forward to the 35 yard line, making the stop defensively for the East team. That was Ben Ewing out of St. Thomas Aquinas. He'll play his college football right here at Fort A State. And in fact, he is one of four future Fort Hayes State Tigers on the roster between the two teams and he makes the stop for the East team. You want to talk about the emotional leader for the East and a guy who loves football. How about Ben Ewing? They had the first meeting. They said players meet down <laughs> at the dorm. We're going to have a team meeting and talk. Bring your shoulder pads, bring your helmets. So the players <laughs> did. Except for he had his shoulder pads and helmet on. <laughs> The way it should be. Second down and seven. Here's Burns, 35 yard line, 37, 38 yard line. Pick up about three or four yards. And yeah, I'd say this about the East team defensively. They had a pretty good scouting report. They're holding their positions and not moving like that. Uh, offense can be very deceptive if you don't uh, hold your assignments. And so far, the East team has done it pretty well. And so far, what they've done is said if everyone does the responsibilities, holds their position, we'll be fine. And that makes defense a lot easier for all the guys. Then they have a safety, Charlie White, number six. Stay back and look for play action pass. The other 10 guys are up at the line of scrimmage. They're all within five yards, probably about four yards of the ball, thinking, let's stop the run. Third down play from the 40 yard line. Misdirection, and there it is. The lineman's got it. 45, 43. He's still on his feet. Down to the 30 yard line, and that's Evan Morico, the lineman. He's a fullback, 5'10, 240 pounds. He too is headed to K State. He ended up the football. Look at that west sideline. They are fired up because the big man just hit a home run. Morico is a captain. He came in as an offensive lineman. They said, you know what? You could probably be in the backfield. And this is a time where you don't want to be a defensive back. Joel Spain tried to hit the big man, but the lineman turned running back, runs up the middle on third down. Good ball of security. Big hit and moving downfield. This is his last football game. He's a captain for the West, and you know why. Look Boy. at that blocking back in the backfield. When I throw this in on his resume, he's the 2 8 defensive player of the year. Just got a big offensive player. Here's Howell who was grabbed on the right side of that defense by the East squad after pickup uh, close to a yard. The West team inside the 30 29 yard line seven nothing East leads West East scored on a seven yard touchdown sprint from Tony Barksdale Jr. It culminated a 62 yard drive. Meanwhile except for this drive West team had not had a first down. You look at Evan Merkel and the size that he is at El Saline High School. He lines over that fullback spot. So second down play, we'll call it 10, no gain on the first down play. And there's Howell, puts it on the ground briefly, now keeps it, has to keep it, makes some yards out of it, 25, 24 yard line. I think he was expecting to hand off. Burns looks at Knobloch, meanwhile Colton Howell kept the football, got six yards out of it. Only Scott Mosier and uh, the quarterback will know because this offense has a spinner series component to it. Now I don't think they put it in, but he turned it into where he, Baked two different ways and then ran up the middle. You go to the old fashioned single wing, the way it was originally run, they did all kind of spinning like that to keep the deception high. Here's Burns. Burns needs to get the 20 in the East team defensively, trying to get to him, and they will for a loss of uh, what is five yards on the play. Burns there, and guess who? Defensively, Dylan Smith again out of Bonner Springs. He's going to play his football at Pitt State. He has been. The defensive player of the game so far for the East squad, a loss of about four. He finished the job off, but number 14, Bo Kruger, from the safety position, got up into the backfield, totally blew up the play, and turned Tyler Burns sideways. And once that happened, there was no chance he was going to get near the first down. So now sitting with almost 11 yards to go on fourth down, the West team probably used a timeout. Scott Mosier needs to talk about what they're going to do here on a big play. Gives me a chance to talk about the assistant coaches of both teams, and uh, both should be recognized. Since we're looking at Scott Mosier, the West assistants are, are also an all-star cast themselves. Randall Zimmerman out of Junction City High School, Sam Sellers out of Salina South, Tom Audley out of Andover Central, Glenn O'Neill, Scott Community, and Terry King, El Saline and 3A. Those are outstanding coaches. Meanwhile, for the East team, the head coach at Cherryville, let's Harry Hester, is assisted by Walt Alexander of Topeka, right Blake Pierce Seaman, Bob Everyone, Campbell of Fort Scott, Brad Burkdahl Wellsville, and Chris Schmidt of Wolfie. As we get up close and personal with Scott Mosier, he's trying to get his West team fired up. Fourth down play coming as his team trails 7 0. This drive looked promising after the big run by Evan Morrickle, but the East has stepped up on this drive. Scott Mosier's mother passed away when he was getting ready for his sophomore year in high school. and. 
she had such a big influence on him like most mothers do but he wasn't going to go out for football he decided wow. when he was a young man i'm not going to play football and his mom said you are playing football <laughs> no discussion and look this man has been a part of football for the rest of his life he continues to thank his mother for getting him into the ball game and he loves honoring her memory and right now he probably wishes he had a chance to talk to her and say what do you call on fourth and 11 that's not easy <laughs> fourth down 11 in fact Howell and now a timeout's called official indicated the timeout was on him that's the initial discussion it is a fourth down and 11 the West team is at their 30 yard line they'll need to get down to the 19 to convert a first down you're looking at Wayne Cox who is the referee again these Shrine Bowl officials all volunteers they pay their own way they are not paid in the ball game in fact so many officials want to work this game because they understand the honor and prestige they, they, they don't get paid and they have to turn officials actually away from this game but here's your fourth down play how now empty house backfield for how back to pass has some protection throws it downfield looking for a receiver and it's going to be incomplete it was intended for Lane Bieberly it was over his head but the East team did a great job of not falling for the uh, the initial fake in the run and defensively kept stop. the pass from getting away well with it being fourth and 11 you don't worry about the short pattern so on a stop and go the defenders were back and then we talked about how number six Charlie White has playing free safety kind of a center field mentality don't let anybody get behind you and he did a perfect job of knocking the ball away from the other number six of the West who is trying to get downfield Lane Bieberly it's incomplete it was a good drive by the West to move the ball down to the East 30 but no score from the drive so with 7 11 to go before halftime East takes over up a touchdown seven to nothing and here's Barksdale who gets the football and is in trouble. Gets forward to the line of scrimmage. Did a great job just to get a couple of yards out of it because he was surrounded, had nowhere to go. That West defense reacted well to the run. Well, they are starting to react well because you see this pistol offense and you see a no huddle offense. You see receivers spread out all over the place. What do you think when you're a player nowadays? I bet they want to pass the football. But what they've realized here is that the East has not looked to pass very much at all. So it changes the mentality of those linebackers like Blake Richmeyer, Ty Hart in the middle. And then on the outside, the outside linebackers are looking much more for the run. The safeties are filling a little bit quicker. All right, there's a second down play coming up. Let's go down to Katie Falco. Katie? All right, Evan, walk us through that run there. Oh, well, that was kind of a special play we put in throughout the week, and uh, we thought we'd catch <laughs> them off guard, and luckily that time we did, and I we just kept going, and driving my feet and luckily we got first down and just could keep going so so when you reported the camp uh, this week as an offensive lineman and it, they told you you're gonna be a running back whose idea was that well it was kind of a accumulation we needed people and uh, coach Keen kind of recommended me for the spot he said he thought he knew a guy and uh, thought about me and it's worked out so far how much of an honor has it been getting to be a captain for this team? Oh, it, it means everything in the world to me, you know. I was captain on for El Celine and got to really kind of be a leader and step up for my senior season and to come here and do the same, especially in the Shrine Bowl, supporting everything the Shriners do for the hospital. It's just a complete honor and privilege to do so. All right, Evan, thank you so much and congratulations. And Mark, we'll send it back up to you. Yeah, we got a, a penalty being assessed here. There was a discussion on exactly what the penalty was. The official went over and talked to quarterback Beatty for a while and looking at Wayne Cox there and then after that explanation took place well these twice has been called for not having the proper equipment we saw a defender go off the field because he had shorts on basically rather than knee pad football pants over his knees as number 26 Isaiah Macklin and then there was another player for the East so they called for the first penalty of the game there's paid he keeps it needs a block gets to the 35 40 yard lines a first down gets it and up to the 45 yard line Beatty somehow snuck between those big linemen up front found some space and has a big pickup of almost 15 yards in the play Alec Beatty is a dual threat quarterback he has the capabilities of throwing but here this is quarterback draw it's called a little trap action up front opens up a hole and then he's able to get near the sideline and move the ball down to the 45 yard line well designed play quarterback run up the middle that squirts out to the left meanwhile West defensively trying to settle down here three four defense Ryan Kuhn of Oakley in the middle there Tyreek Naz Carmichael of Junction City one of those talented linebackers 
Back we're going to see Hunter Knobloch as the linebacker. Here's Barksdale. Barksdale dances forward from the 45 to almost the 48-yard line in there on the stop for the West team. Hunter Knobloch, who also is playing some offense. In fact, in this game, I mentioned Hunter Knobloch, Stan, because in recent years, and you and I have done this game for a long time, they've used primarily two platoon football. Hunter Knobloch playing, playing both ways is kind of unusual. Yeah, there's a lot of pl two platoon football now played in high school. There's not very many schools left that have a lot of guys going both ways, and Knobloch's one of the few that's going to tonight doing it for the West. Second down and eight. Beatty with Barksdale behind him. 7-0 East team. Beatty back to pass. Under pressure. Screen play set up. Barksdale has it. Stiff arms. 50. 45 yard line. Looking for a block. 40 yard line. 35's got a clear space. 20. 15. 10. 5. Touchdown East. Barksdale scores the second time in the ball game, and it's 13-0 East in this 42nd annual Kansas Shrine Bowl. Blitz by the West from the right side of the offense meant there are very few people left on the left side. Could Tony Barksdale Jr. break a tackle? As soon as he broke one tackle, there was open field. He slipped by another guy and took it all the way. What a great call. Harry Hester, the Cherryville High School coach and the head coach of the E squad, had the perfect play called. Blitz over to the right side, get rid of the football by running a screen to the left, and it turns in to a 53-yard touchdown pass. Beatty holding for Swainhart. Holds good, kick is up, and it is good. 14-0, East leads West here at the Shrine Bowl. It was a screen play that made it possible, but Tony Barksdale Jr. followed the blocks to perfection. He did, he, he gave a great stiff arm to number 87, Raiden Burley. Slipped off a tackle from number seven, Javon Burse, and then raced down the left sideline. But there weren't very many West defenders in position to stop this play because you saw from the end zone angle, the rush was coming from the right. They had the players on the wrong side of the field. Just an accident from the West defensive perspective and great fortune for the East. And you give Tony Barksdale Jr. a little bit of room. He is going to make you pay. Scoring a touchdown in a West has a two score lead. Four play drives, 76 yards, took a little over a minute. Barksdale, 63 yard touchdown reception. Beatty now three for three, 59 yards passing. And Barksdale, he is running the ball well, catching the ball well. Let me correct myself. I said the West has a lead. The West has won eight of the last nine games. Maybe we've been saying that too much well, over we the have. years. It's the East. I know the East wears the red, but it's only the second year in the history that they actually wore the red jerseys. Right. Before that, in the first 40 games, they had white jerseys. West had green. They've just switched it. And the East leads 14 to nothing with another big play. So the West finds themselves in a situation down two touchdowns, had a promising drive that was turned over on downs in the ball game. The West team has had a couple of drives where the West team has had a third down and fourth down play that's been stopped and they've turned the ball over on downs. The West team trying to get back in the ball game, but this has been a rare score in this series where the East has been up by a couple of touchdowns at 14 to nothing. And the, the fans, of course, were right in the heart of the West where the West team has won three times out of the three times that they played and this is unusual here's Burr's 30 yard line he could turn this and change it in a moment he's brought down to the 33 yard line in on the stop for the east team ryan rakestraw got down in a hurry ryan rakestraw by the way out of southeast cherokee there are 68 players in this game 67 have had players before from their high school to play in this ball game and ryan rakestraw is the only one ever from southeast cherokee just made the play defensively for the East team. That's a pretty big honor right there. It sure is. Because now the Shrine Bowl allows only one player per school to play in this ball game. There's a rare exception in this game where there's two players from Topeka High because there was a substitute. But normally you can only have one player. So that means there are a lot more schools represented, and yet he's still the first from his school. First down and 10 for the West team, 34 yard line. Colton Howell. And now the West team wants a timeout. The West called a timeout. That is the third, should be the third and final, according to my count. The West team, Tyler Burns lined up on the right side, then immediately looked at Mosier, and Tyler Burns gave an indication that he looked like he had lined up wrong. So the West called a timeout. This is an important drive for the West team, given the time situation, so why not call timeout? Yeah, he'd love to get a score before the half, and the West knows they've had some good plays on the last possession. It was the only possession they've had first down, but they drove the ball all the way down to the 30-yard line of the East. But the thing that they're trying to do right now is not just run their offense. They'd like to get the ball to Tyler Burns and get him some space. 
There's an example where they probably are trying to set up a play by lining him outside the backfield and hope they can get him the football. Worth mentioning, 56 of the 68 players in this ball game will play college sports. 51 of them will play football at the college level. For the other 17, the Shrine Bowl, their last opportunity to put on the helmet and shoulder pads. So it's kind of like graduation ceremony for them. And meanwhile, for the other college-bound standouts, kind of the first game of their college careers here. 14-0, 5.55 to go. Second quarter is Howell. Howell looking for a receiver. has got knob block. Catches the ball at the 35-yard line. But there to make the play once again, that is Dylan Smith. The Mike Rivera Award winner has been an award-winning defender so far for the East team tonight. They plays for Blue Valley High School, going to play for Pittsburgh State. A number of these players on their way to play Pitt State. Just fundamental defense. Now in the EKL where he plays, passing offenses are the norm. So he has no trouble at a linebacker knowing exactly where his angles should be. You can see that he's big and strong and athletic and looks the part, but he also is very comfortable against the passing game. So Dylan Smith makes the stop. Second down and 10 for the West team. who will go to work here. Colton Howell's gone all the way for the West squad. He's had some talented backfield guys with him. Hunter Knobloch, who's in motion, he gets the football from some another handoff, a double handoff. This time, Tyler Burns takes it from the 34-yard line out to the 37. You got so many practices, like 12 or 14 that they had. Running a play like that, it's uh, very difficult to pull off, but they did it nicely there. It is, and one of the things they're trying to do is get a change of direction, a misdirection mentality. But those guys received the handoff, the initial handoff, and the pitch, they happened so quickly, the defense didn't get a chance to react. If it, if Knobloch would have taken a step or two more and made him think he's truly going to the left, it would have opened up more for Tyler Burns on the right side. Third down, West team, to my count, has two first downs. That was in their last drive prior to that. Ten plays, no first downs. Here's Burns, 40-yard line, 45, first down. West has the first down, but there's a flag down as well. Going behind the play, uh, thrown in the direction of alignment. It was thrown right at Logan Creek, who's out of Conway Springs. That's where the flag came from, so it could very possibly bring back this play, which would have been a first down for the West. It's the first holding call and this first penalty against the West. It's been a very clean game when you think about penalties. The East only penalty was caused by a malfunction in equipment, which is a rare penalty. And here we have a holding call, big penalty because Burns had gotten the first down over the left side, but it is called back. So ball move. They're calling that against Logan Creek. He actually ran the single wing in high school at Conway Springs. So he is very used to playing this and was super impressive in camp. In fact, he's going to Butler County Junior College and the coaches have talked about he may be good enough to play at a higher level. But he dominated his guy so much that they said that he twisted and held him. Third down 14, Colton Howell tripped up, falls down back at the 19-yard line. And that was an easy play for the East defensively. Howell just lost his footing. He's down, long fourth down play coming up. And the West with their chins down as they head to the sidelines. East has held them again. What a momentum difference that is. Instead of having the first down out near midfield, the penalty and then the quarterback tripping on the turf, falling down all the way back at the 22-yard line means they are punting and actually lost 12 yards net on that drive. Tyler Harris from Andover Central is the punter. Gets a good boop. It's going to go to the 45-yard line. Actually takes an east roll. So it's going to be the 43-yard line. The east team with a two-touchdown lead here in this Kansas Shrine Bowl is going to start this drive in West Territory. He has a real chance here to really seize control of this ball game. This is really on the West defense on this drive coming up. Yeah, a lot of pressure on the West defense because there's very little momentum right now. And you know, one mistake leads to one play that ends up being bad, then a punt that doesn't roll forward at all, kind of slips off the right foot of the punter, Tyler Harris, doesn't take a good roll, and now the East has the football at the West 43-yard line. Keep in mind, the East fumbled at the three-yard line, could already be a three-touchdown lead. 3.28 to go before halftime, stick with us. You're gonna hear from the band at halftime, that is on the way. And we'll also hear from dignitaries. Check presentations. Halftime is an event as well at the Kansas Shrine Bowl. Here's Beatty looking downfield, still on his feet and hit, and finally wrapped up and brought down. Well, he was hit by a couple of West defenders and somehow managed to keep his feet. Just shows you how tough Beatty really is. He is a he is a guy that's going to be great at the Division Three level next year. Yeah, going up to St. Paul, Minnesota, McAllister College there 
and he's not the biggest guy. It was just a coverage sack, really, because he had enough time in the backfield while he's rolling out to find a receiver, but there was no one open downfield. Sack record, second down, and we'll call it 14. Ball on the 47-yard line, 14-0 east, inside three minutes to go. Beatty with a five-receiver set, tied into the ball game. Beatty is going to keep it, and right there to make the play, and a big one. Big number nine, he comes up to play. Carlos Taylor from Wichita High School, six foot 245, and he just laid the helmet right in the center of Beatty. Five wide means the only running action you're going to get is quarterback draw. And they tried to make it work, but Carlos Taylor ran right up the middle. Watch him bust through. Four different guys touched their red jerseys on Big 90, and none of them ended up getting a square shot. He busted right through everybody and buried the quarterback for a loss. Well, Beatty's up and okay, but he's facing a third down play. Tony Barksdale behind him. He's in the backfield. Again, four receivers set for the East team. Beatty's going to pass. Catch is made like Showen on the far sideline. It is Dalton Showen with the catch, makes the play at the 43-yard line. And get to the original line of scrimmage, but a fourth down play is coming up, and the East punting unit is coming into the ball game. The West defense did their job. With no momentum, great field position for the East, down 14 to nothing. They had to come up and make some plays. They did. They don't allow the East any net yardage. They lose one yard on the drive, and now they're forced to get into punt formation. So timeout is called. The East wants to make sure they have their punt defense set up here. And they don't want things to turn around. Well, so they, well, they got to decide, do you want your punt return unit in or do you want your punt safe? Sometimes you want to leave your defense out and worry about a fake. Anytime the team has the ball in your territory, that's a time to take a chance for a punt fake. So he may say, let's just play defense and allow the punt to roll down wherever it goes, maybe fair catch it. Or does he say, in fourth and 11, I know they're going to punt. Let's run our punt return unit out there and try to return this thing. A total of these 68 players, 34 on each side, were selected by a vote of the state's media. It's interesting the Shriners actually do not have a vote, but they advise coaches to nominate players who are both good athletes and good citizens. So if you read through the biographies of these players like Stan and I study them, the great thing we notice is that they're great students. They've always been really super citizens, and they've really represented their hometowns, not only in football, but most of them are multi-sport athletes. We've got valedictorians, straight A students. We've got concert choir singers. We've got powerlifting champions. And really a great cross-section of the state of Kansas. And that's why, uh, I don't know, that's kind of why I love this game every year, because you really get you really get a good sampling of what uh, the state of Kansas is all about, some of the best of the best of our young people in the state. The punt angled toward the, look at this punt, 10, five yard line, it's gonna go to the end zone. That was a great punt from Dawson Swinehart, who angled it, trying to get it out of bounds inside the 10 yard line, but it takes a really a favorable bounce for the West team. So the West has a minute and 23, and we'll get the ball at their own 20 yard line. Now they have a choice. Do they wanna to try to throw the football? They have an all-star unit. They've got quarterbacks who can throw, but they're running the single wing. Do they just say, let's run some running plays, see if we can get something going? And if not, let's go to halftime, regroup, and see if we can make a difference in the second half. That's a choice right now that West head coach Scott Mosier has. So Tyler Burns lining up. Knob block is to his left, and knob block will get it. Looking for a block from Burns. Gets forward to 25, 27, 30-yard line. The pickup is five yards, but it's a running place. The clock's moving, minute 16. And now the clock stops. Looked like a timeout or oh, a helmet. Helmet came off. Ben you. Ben Ewing lost his helmet. That's the third time an East defender has lost his helmet. They may they may tell him that they need to strap them a little bit tighter. It's very dangerous losing right. your helmet. It's not a joking matter no. at all. He, he lost his helmet. A, a game strategy why he also stopped the clock. So minute 10, now the clock's moving. Burns, and here's Knobloch. Knobloch is going to get wrapped up. A big defensive play from the East squad. The East defender was Wyatt Hendricks out of Topeka Seaman who makes the stop. Now the East can think about calling a timeout. Would they like to save a little time before the half, thinking that the West can't make this third down, would have to punt? But an easy play for the defender. Just hold your area. You notice, how, notice how the East isn't running toward action, left or right. They all just hold their position. They're making one big red wall, and very few times has it been penetrated, except for one big number 62, Evan Morical, slipped through there for a 31-yard gain. Other than that, the East defense has been flawless. Now look at Harry Hester. He's got a big smile for the East team. They're going to take a two-touchdown lead unless the West can come through here. Inside 25 seconds ago, here's Burns. Burns forward to about the 27-yard line. Fourth down play is coming up. And actually, he fumbled the football. East thinks that he's got it, but the, 
Official steps he's in, down. says down. But the East could call timeout and force a punt. Clock stops at eight. Eight seconds to go before halftime. Remember, there's no replay. This is not a college or pro football game where you get a chance to watch a replay. It's fourth down that down. The West does not have their punt team in. No, and uh, East team trying to get some clarification. Take another look at that play and how it unfolded. The ball came loose at the end of it. Tyler Burns is running the football. He's in the air. And it's very hard to tell with that angle if there was a fumble that the East recovered or not. But it doesn't matter. If any official says, I've got him down, it is down. The timeout was called. And there are 15 seconds left in the game. They're going to put 15 seconds back on the clock, which means the West needs to put their punt team out on the field, punt the football, and the East can see what kind of field position they get. Remember, the previous punt did not go very far, which right. would give... The East one chance to heave the football toward the end zone. Been impressed with these coaches, small school coaches, both of them, and the points of strategy have been very important for both teams. The East has done it better, up 14 to nothing, but the West trying to find a crease when they can have a chance and will probably get an opportunity at halftime to talk about it. You know, one of the things is Scott Mosier, we talked about him as the West head coach, and you talked about being a small school guy coaching, and we've said how long he's been involved in football. What's really neat about these guys working at a high school, they're not only coaches. Do you realize that Scott Mosier is the principal yes, he is. at Mead? So administratively, he has you know, the most important job there, along with teaching young men football. Punt's coming. Tony Barksdale Jr. is back for the East team, trying to chase it down, but it's going to angle. He's going to pick it up. It's going to have a return to the 23-yard line. Gets a block up to the 30-yard line. West makes the stop five seconds to go. Clock stops five seconds to go, and the West... Or the East could probably go down to a knee if they want to, but could run a play if they need to. Up 14 to nothing, five seconds to go before halftime. So coming up here at halftime, we're going to hear from the coach who is ahead. Harry Hester will be on the mic with Katie Falco. And then we are going to hear from the All-Star Shrine Bowl Band. That's coming up. Then we're going to have a presentation of checks and much, much more. Stan and I'll be, be back for highlights. Of There's the band, and this band is uh, outstanding. They're the first ones in camp, in fact, and boy, they, they get here and they work all, they work out here on this field. Can you imagine how hot it was? Yesterday it was 107, by the way. And that wasn't even on the turf here in Hayes. So that group's been working, and they're about to show off for us, and we're going to see it. This is the rare exception when you can watch a band during a television telecast, and that's the last play. Taking a knee for the East team is Tristan Spear. And the East team is going to head to their locker room with a two-touchdown lead in the West. 14-0 East leads West. And Stan, given the long series that it is, are we surprised by this score at the moment? Yeah, anytime you see this type of separation, I'm a little bit surprised. These two teams seem very even coming in. But the East was very, very focused, getting a chance to be around a team and talking to the coaches. There's no surprise from them how well they've played. Now the West is going to have to pick up their game to get back in the game in the second half. And last year's Shrine Bowl game in Pittsburgh, Garden City quarterback Grayson Temple rolled up 247 yards in a 21-6 win. Meanwhile, it's head down to the field. Katie Falco is with Harry Hester. All right, Coach, after that seven-yard touchdown run, you came over to the bench and you said, don't let your foot off the gas, and they haven't done that. What have you seen out of this team, both offensively and defensively? Team's a key word. Uh, these guys are, are playing as a team, so they got me going again. Uh, but uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, we, you know, we missed one down there in the end zone, and just uh, we'll, we'll get that corrected. Um, these, our defense is lights out. Our defense, you got, I mean, you're shutting these. That, those are some good dudes over there, and we're shutting them down. Um, and they rallied to the ball. And, uh, you know, just like we broke it down right there, one team, one family, I am. So. I am, and you brought that from Cherryville. How proud are you of these guys for embracing that motto? Oh, my goodness. I told them before the game, but I couldn't ask for a better Shrine Bowl all-star team because they're, they're truly one team. You know, they, they, they're not any all-stars. And, uh, you know, you, they're just you, and they're playing like it. We are a team. We are East Side, and we got we got uh, you know 24 more minutes, so we're not going to let off the gas. All right, Coach. Thank you so much, and best of luck in the second half. All right, Mark. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Katie. With Harry Hester, an emotional Harry Hester, who was at the 5K run this morning. He's had a long day and a long week. The Shrine Bowl Band of Kansas presents the Kansas Masonic All State High School Marching Band. They're under the direction of Lane Weaver, Band Director at Fort A. State University. Let's listen in.
79, Sister Sledge released their iconic chart-topping single that had the dance clubs jumping. Sing along as the band grooves with We Are Family.
And many of the fans here are giving the Kansas Masonic All-State High School Marching Band a standing ovation. The camp began on Tuesday, led up to tonight's performance. Well done. Meanwhile, on the field, we're at halftime. The 42nd Annual Kansas Shrine Bowl from Fort A. State University on the Cox Channel, Kansas, and the Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. We return to Hayes in a moment. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. A Shriners Hospital for Children. Love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Discover the Contour app from Cox. The app takes you to a world of personalized entertainment that can change how you watch TV. If you're a Cox TV and internet customer, it's likely you already have access to the Contour app for free. All you need is an iPad or select Android tablet and you're ready. Watch live TV and on-demand shows at home. Access TV network apps you can watch anywhere and so much more. Just download the Contour app and sign in with your Cox primary user ID and password to get started today. I went to a place just like the island. Every day is a perfect getaway. Play for the day or stay overnight. Daily admission and overnight packages are available. Coco Key is affordable fun for the entire family. Family fun for everyone. Coco Key Water Resort. More fun, better value. Coco Key Water Resort. Lewis Toyota is going to have one summer giant used car blowout for 12 days and 12 days only. Prices will be clearly marked at every windshield at huge discounts with our used car blowout prices. All prices to move, savings you can see. No games, no gimmicks, no hassles. Giving you top dollar for your trade. No payments till Labor Day, no money down, and interest rates as low as 1.9%. Our summer giant used car blowout for 12 days and 12 days only at Lewis Toyota. I-470 in Fairlawn and Topeka, right on the corner and always right on the price. The five Shrine Centers of Kansas represent nearly 8,000 Shriners. They put a lot of work into this ball game. At halftime, East leads West by a score of 14 to nothing. They introduced earlier some representatives from the state of Kansas and what they're doing at the moment. They're representing the, the 15 board members, including uh, the board director who is Stan Jayhay. Those are the five guys from Kansas earlier on. Venus, Tim Williams, Ralph Street, Brad Kane, Wayne Wells. Those are the Kansans. And uh, now they're introducing the national folks who are representatives here. While they do that, let's head back down to the field with Katie Falco, the very special guest. Katie, take it away. All right, thank you, Mark. Well, I'm here with Sydney Kendall, and she did the coin toss before you were a part of the parade. How exciting was it for you to get to do the coin toss and represent Trainers Hospital? It was really cool to represent Trainers and know that they're playing football to support the hospital for me and help me out, or help all of the patients out, including me, so it's really cool. And tell us a little bit about what Shriners Hospital has done for you and your family. Um, well, when I lost my arm when I was six years old, I came to Shriners right away, and they were just so opening and helpful, and they gave me prosthetics and occupational therapy, and now I, it's like I have two hands, but I have one. And you became a patient ambassador about six years ago. Yeah. Uh, why did you choose to do that, and how has that helped you? Um, I chose to do that because I know how much Shriners has helped me, and I just want to give back to them and represent them, the hospital. And it ha it's helped me just, I feel so much more confident in myself, and I'm able to speak in front of so many people, and it's really cool. And you and the patient ambassadors, a lot of you guys have become best friends through this. How much do they all mean to you? Um, they're like my best friends. Like, when we were together at the hotel, we all went swimming, and it was so much fun. And I just, I love them so much, and it's really cool to be with them. And tell, can you tell us a little bit about what happened to you in the boating accident? Well, a rope caught around my arm, and a boat was dr driving this way, and another one was going this way, and my arm just kind of came off. <laughs> And during the hospital visit, you guys love telling your story and you love inspiring these players. How has Shriners Hospital helped you get that emotional courage to do so? I don't even know. I guess their nursing staff and everyone on the staff just 
they just are so happy and so confident in themselves. And meeting other people like me who are older have inspired me to do that and to be, yeah, inspiring to others now. All right, Sydney, thank you so much. And uh, we will see you around later in the show. All right, Joe, thank you. Or Mark, thank you so much. We'll send it back up to you. Yeah, Sydney Kendall in 2007 lost her right forearm in that boating accident. By 2009, she was part of the St. Louis Shriners Hospital's ambassador program. You heard her interview with Katie and how well she represents herself. She gives presentations about ability awareness. She competes in swimming, skiing, recently completed a triathlon. Great to hear from Sydney Kendall and welcome to Hayes. East leads West 14 to nothing here at halftime of the 42nd annual Kansas Shrine Bowl All-Star Game. Introductions continue. We're going to take a break here. You're watching the ball game on Cox Channel Kansas and the Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. A Shriners Hospital for Children, love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Summer's almost here and there's never been a better time to buy a pre-owned vehicle from Mel Hamilton Ford. Right now we've got a great selection of vehicles priced under $12,000. We have over 50 cars to choose from. You won't have to settle for a vehicle that doesn't fit your needs. Every vehicle on our lot goes through a rigorous inspection process and not everything makes the cut. So you'll have peace of mind buying your next pre-owned vehicle. Come out today and check out our selection of vehicles priced under $12,000 or shop us online 24 hours a day at mhford.com. At Mel Hamilton Ford, we're better, we're proving it. You be the judge. If you love baseball and softball, you'll love baseball savings and softballsavings.com. Find an unmatched selection of bats, clubs, balls, team and individual apparel, and all the other accessories you'll need at warehouse pricing. Open seven days a week with extended store hours. And now, shop for all your golf and soccer needs, too. Easy to find off K96. Baseball savings is in the TGW.com warehouse located on 34th Street, just west of Webb Road. This is the time of year to do some spring cleaning, and a great place to start is your own garage. At Home Automotive Center in Abilene, you can turn your trash into cash. Bring us your old, your tired, your worn out vehicle, and we'll give you up to $1,500 over Kelly Blue Book average trade-in for a new Chevy, Buick, Cadillac, or one of our outstanding used vehicles. Don't miss out on your chance to clean up and drive away in something new. Our goal is to make buying fun and easy. So if you're in the next vehicle, come to Home Automotive Center in Abilene. You'll be glad you did. Or on the web at homemodel.com. Uh, both the East and West are in their respective locker rooms talking about their strategy for the second half. Halftime activities, meanwhile, in the field continue as the East leads the West here 14 to nothing. On the, at the moment, the corporate sponsors of this Kansas Shrine Bowl are being honored. The mock-up checks you're seeing represent cash contributions, gifts in kind, and expense payments. Worth noting is that the Kansas Shrine Bowl Alumni Association, made up of past players and coaches, are presenting a check themselves. And meanwhile, your cable company here, Cox Communications, has contributed the cost of television production to provide this event to a statewide viewing audience on board the 90, now almost 100 cities, served by Cox Communications and the Time Warner Sports Channel viewing audience that is on hand in Kansas City. Among the sponsors, Sugar Creek of Pittsburgh, they sponsored the coin flip sponsorship, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas, a check representing their health and safety sponsorship, Walmarts from across the state of Kansas working together to provide the Kansas Shrine Bowl with donations. This year also another sponsor for another year, Farm Bureau Financial Services presented a check with their sponsorship and representatives of each company are presenting the check to members of the, the Shriners who are on hand. Jocks Niche for their cheer and walk for love sponsorship. That was the 5K race and one mile walk this morning that happened at eight in the morning. Cox Communications, I've mentioned them. Their check for the jersey and ticket sponsorship. Kansas Shrine Bowl Alumni Association, those past players and coaches, they get together. They're proud of certainly their association with all the things that the Kansas Shrine Bowl has done and what the Shriners have done with the money that is raised there on hand. The city of Hayes has been unbelievable as well as you see that check for 25 grand very well. City of Hayes has done a great job. They host the sponsorship. Many members were involved in that and uh, several of the hospital patients that you saw in the 
earlier piece today, if you're just joining us, Katie Falco did a story about the hospital patient's visit to the players here, and the young man who's on the field at the moment was one of them. That was really uh, heart-rendering. Best Western Hotel Owners of Kansas, they presented a check for their scoreboard sponsorship. Watco Companies, proud of their banquet sponsorship. Last night, they served 1,500 athletes, coaches, fans, Shriners from across the state of Kansas. It's unbelievable. They do 1,500 in a buffet in about 15 minutes. It's uh, really well orchestrated. They've done it every year. And the Median Shrine Touchdown is presenting a check for the cash proceeds from their golf tournament and the uh, contributions of their sponsors. The golf tournament was this morning. So guys in the green jacket get the checks and about 50 to 75,000, almost 100,000 of that money will go to the Kansas Shrine Bowl hospitals, the 22 hospitals across North America for services of patients that you many of you have seen tonight we're going to take a break here our halftime will continue 14 nothing east leads west we're getting closer to getting down to business for the second half that's on the way stan weber and i return we'll take a look at your first half highlights and your stats that's coming up live from hayes love is being independent love is dancing at Shriners Hospital for Children, love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Hi guys, I'm Jessica and this is Nate and we're You Build It Wichita. Our customers have given us an A plus satisfaction rating. Why don't you come down and be one of our satisfied customers today? Your home's in your hands, you build it. Credit King Auto Sales is getting better all the time. We're doing it better, We're doing it better all the time. Credit King Auto Sales at the King's Corner, 31st South and Broadway, Wichita, is Kansas' largest buy here, pay here dealer. The best selection, priced from $3,000 to $30,000. When the banks and new car lots tell you no, the King can help. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Credit King Autos. See us at GoCreditKing.com. My name is William Stockwell. This was my two and a half car garage. We'd had it turned into a room for my dad to get him out of the nursing home. If it wasn't for you, Bill, we wouldn't have this amazing transformation. Thank you. You did a fabulous job. Your home's in your head. We love you, you build it. You build it. You spend a lot of your life in your car. At Quest, we don't think you should have to spend a lot of your life paying for that car. Quest Auto Loans. Rates as low as 2.24% APR. Apply online today at quest-cu.org. Quest Credit Union. Discover the possibilities. 14-0 is our score. East leading West. Second half is about to begin here, but before we get to that point, two touchdowns from Tony Barksdale Jr. The difference, a 14-0 advantage for the East team. As we say hello from the broadcast booth, he's Stan Weber. I'm Mark Ewing, and glad to be on board with you as I thought about going out West and the challenge for the East team. This is the heart of the West, Western Kansas. Wide geography to pick from from the West, and the West has really dominated over the years. The West has dominated the East over the years. So the East, what they're doing right now is very unusual and a really a showdown right right now from what they're doing. Yeah, the West has won eight of the last nine games. All three previously played here in Hayes, but the East said we're going to do something about that, and it starts with defense. The defense has been unbelievable. It's only been one possession all game where the West has gotten the first down. They have only two first downs all game. It's all been about the big plays. Let's take a look at some of those big plays the first half. Stan, take us through it. Big plays all the way around, especially from the East team. Yeah, there's a big red wall of defenders right there. Fourth down. Early in the game on the first possession, and the West gets stopped, and the East is able to take advantage of it, running the football behind Tony Barksdale Jr. He has been a man tonight running the football. He runs it up the middle, and on the first possession for the East, they have a 10-yard touchdown run, and they lead 7 to nothing at that point. It was all East when you think about the big plays in the first half. They're putting pressure on the quarterback. Their defense has been great, allowing less than 100 yards in the first half eight different guys there helping on the tackle but here's the first first down of the game for the west they had a couple of plays they were a lot of fun here's one they get a first down on a little scramble and then maybe a, another big play and 
Tony Barksdale Jr. down to Schoen, and Schoen thinks he might have a touchdown, but what a great defensive play to come in and make this tackle. You might think that doesn't matter, but Willie Edwards' tackle led to this play. We changed the quarter, there's a fumble, and the West gets the only turnover of the game, holds the lead to seven to nothing, and gives themselves a chance. Now watch the big guy, the black helmet, get the ball, sneaks through, that's Evan Morical running the football, big guy. 31 yards, the most exciting play <laughs> of the game, maybe, and for the West. But here's a screen pass, a little blitz from the right, leaves the left side open, and Tony Barksdale Jr. is able to take it all the way. A screen pass turns into a 53-yard touchdown. The East led 14 to nothing at that point, and that's where we go into the half with the East leading 14 to zero. But if you want to talk about the comeback opportunity, take a look at these stats. One thing it doesn't show up there, do you realize that the East, even though they've dominated, have only six first downs. Huh. The West could still possibly get back in the game with a little more offense. You see on the left side of the stats right there, the East passing game, 138 yards, most of it on that halfback pass, but the East passing game has been so efficient. They are six of six passing the football. If the West can stop giving up big plays in the passing game, they're doing a pretty good job against the run. That's the formula to give their offense a chance to get back in this game in the second half. A lot of heroes for the East team. Dalton Schoen has three catches for 74 yards, but Tony Barksdale Jr. has nine carries for 37 yards, and then a halfback pass downfield is the difference. 14-0 East leads West. So when we come back, what will the West do to change things up? We're about to find out. Sun is setting on Lewis Field here at Fort A. State University, and the second half is about to begin the 42nd Annual Shrine Bowl. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. At Shriners Hospital for Children, love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. It's Ram commercial truck season here at Zeller Motor Company and it's time to get to work. Come check out our selection of 2015 Ram 2500 and 3500 heavy duty and cabin chassis trucks. Whether it's the durable 6.7 liter Cummins diesel or the legendary 6.4 liter Hemi, we've got the truck for you. On sale now, Ram 3500 regular cab cabin chassis 4x4 for under $34,000. Take that itty bitty drive. Attorney Gary Patterson, helping you is what we do. Oh my, I'm with the insurance company and we need you to sign right here, right now. Insurance? Talk to my lawyer. Not again. <laughs> wow, what a great app. It's the best phone call you can make. Call 687-2400. Everyone has a happy dance. Discover yours when you get a mortgage from Capital Federal. We're right here local. And that means a convenient loan process. And you can meet your loan officer face to face. See why Cat Fed has been true blue for over 120 years. Can't stop dancing, feeling true blue. Discover your happy dance with a mortgage from Capital Federal. The East team's Tony Barksdale Jr. has 165 all-purpose yards and those two touchdowns, and that's the difference. East leads West 14 to nothing. So the pressure is on the West team. Let's go down to the sideline with Katie Falco. Katie. All right, Coach, what adjustments does this team need to make in the second half? Just quit stubbing our toe. We just made uh, offensively. We gummed it up a couple times, uh, missed a handoff, went the wrong way. We tripped over somebody one time. You know, defensively, we just got to wrap up. We gave away a couple big plays. We had a great stop by our defense, moved the ball down, and just didn't get it punched in. So just some things that just some uh, growing pains, I guess, but we better grow up in a hurry. So what was your message to the team in the locker room? Win the half. You know, win the half. Let's take some pride in this thing, and let's win this half. And overall, how amazing of an experience has this been for you and to get to know these guys? It's been great. You know, the, the big picture is these kids, and, and we know that. When these lights come on, you get out here, it's still a football game. And at the end of all this, we're going to understand what, what we're working for and what we're trying to do. But uh, we want to do our, our best. I can, live, I can live with our best. All right.
Morning, Coach. Thank you so much, and best of luck in the second half. And Mark and Stan, back up to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Katie. Let's talk about it. Let's do, uh, put your coach's hat on here, Stan. And if you're Coach Mosey and you're in charge of the West team and you're down 14 nothing, what do you think you tell them? Well, you just start all over and say there really is no trouble coming back from a two-score lead. We can continue to do what we do. The defense, though, has got to be very solid, and they have been. They've only given up six first downs the whole game. Now, the East has been very efficient, and you talk about an all definition of an all-star game. How about this? They're six for six passing the football, but they've had three different players throw passes. So yeah, that's what happens. It's not like the quarterback's dominating, just dropping back and passing. So I think the West says, let's continue to play the way we are on defense, and probably we can hold them to one score or less. Now, the offense is going to have to find a way to start moving the football more effectively, and I still think they're going to need one big play on the offense to get back in the ball game. And it very well could come from that short side tight end. That nice. weak side guy can slip out. They haven't utilized that at all. He's eligible to go out for a pass even though he's lining up in a tackle position because he's the end guy on the line and a receiver. So I think they have a chance to get the ball downfield deep and maybe get a turnover. And that defines how you can, you know, turn over in good field position, and suddenly you got two scores, and you're right back in the game. I will mention they're taking their time warming up. They're, they're safety first of these players, and they get about a three-minute warm-up period, and it has been hot and humid. But uh, as we look at the East team, let's talk about their defensive effort. They have really settled into taking care of what can be a confusing offense to, to cover from the West team. It's textbook. Just watch this guy. These guys work. Everybody's beating their man, keeping their position. If they're supposed to be on the outside shoulder, they stay there. You look at his defensive line. They move forward as a wall. Here comes one, two. No, they don't get him. Okay, three, four, and then eight guys run to the football. They've done that all game long. The East defense has been dominant. You want to go and look more for the pass, which the West really hasn't? Oh, there's a defender right at the line of scrimmage. A pass for no yardage. And the guys are physically dominant, and they are fundamentally sound right now. You just look at how thick and athletic their defensive front looks, and you wonder where are you going to find your gaps. But they can be a little deception. The West team just has to have a slight gap through that wall, and you've got some players that are some home run hitters. When you got Burns in the backfield, and that's the guy that they'd like to get the ball to, Tyler Burns, number 33, you saw a little reverse action pitching in the backfield. There's just a chance you slide a guy through there and you can get a big play. When you're behind, Mark, what you do is do exactly what you planned at the beginning of the game. You don't panic. That's how you get back into the football game. And I don't think there's any chance that Scott Mosier and his West squad is going to do anything different than stick with what brought them here into the ball game, even though it hasn't led to much success because the defense of the East has been dominant. All right, so Kruger and Smith, both with five tackles each in the ball game for the East team, taking a look at the West squad as they break the huddle, getting set for this second half. The Kansas Shrine Bowl is the culmination of over a year of preparation, nine days of intensive training camp on part of the players and coaches. Tonight in Hayes, some of the state's finest athletes are meeting head-to-head -head in a friendly battle that benefits the Shriners Hospitals for Children. 22 hospitals dedicated to improving the lives of children provided by pediatric specialty care. On the field, you're taking a look at the officiating crew, and yes, those are seven new officials. Mike Simpson, Larry Henshaw, Andy Sample, Kirk Simone, Jared Rand, Jim Patton, Rodney uh, Palin, Rick Ruman is our timeout coordinator. He's the only guy that keeps his job for the first half, and hey, who knows how this game will be called in the second half. Those are the only guys here that have any butterflies because they're getting ready for their first play. <laughs> That's just so true. There's Rick Room, and in fact, hi, Rick. How you doing? Great job for us so far. Called the Red Hat, but he's the red body. He is. He's got the, all the red, all red in. From, head, from head to toe. Hayes first hosted the Kansas Shrine Bowl in 1997 and have since hosted in 2007 as well as 2011. The West team has played well here, winning all three previous games. In fact, in 2011, which is the last time we were here. Handley won 30 to 7 over the visiting East team, but way more important than that, the Shrine Bowl generates about 2 million for the local economy. So this is really a Chamber of Commerce moment. But uh, talk about domination by the West. Officially, they outscored the East 77 to 31 during those three games here in Hayes. And as you know, if you travel to state and go to Western Kansas, they love their football. A lot of state champions traditionally have come from the Western side of the state. So Western pride is on the line here as the West 
is about to kick off to the east. As you may recall, the West won the coin toss, elected to receive, and on that opening series, one of the turning points in the ball game, as the West team was stopped on fourth and one in their own territory. East took the football from there and uh, led to a Tony Barksdale Jr. seven-yard sprint to the end zone. That was the first score, which was followed later by a Tony Barksdale score, and 14 to nothing is our score as West getting set here to kick off to the east. Dakota Wolf out of Bueller is the West team kicker. And back for the East team, Brett Osborne from Wellsville, Tony Barksdale, Isaiah Macklin, Charlie White, any of that combination of four, they're back to receive this. And with this kick, the second half of the 2015, Kansas Shrine Bowl is underway. And short kick and a fair catch call, probably an alert one by Derek McGreevy at a Topeka Hayden. He, plays offense so no trouble about him getting back to uh, catch that ball does so and the East team offensively takes the field here uh, on the East side you got to know that Hester's told him telling his team hey the clock is on our side we got a two touchdown lead yeah but in football you cannot stall the game out you know it's not four corners you better move the football if you punt the ball back you can get great field position the West with that kick a high pooch kick gets the football started at the East for the 18 yard line and Tristan Spear, the backup quarterback, gets a chance to come in and lead the offense on his first possession. 5'10", 205 pounder, looks to Burns. Burns is going to get it. Burns gets a block the outside. That's not Burns. Yeah, that's Barksdale. 20 Barksdale Jr. on the carry. The East team with the football, loss of two yards. So the first play defensively for the West team, they respond. Brendan Johnson in the Wichita Northwest makes a stop. Two-yard loss on the play for the East team. It's like an instant replay of a run earlier in the ball game where Barksdale bounced it out to the right side and he came up from a safety position and made a tackle for a loss. Second down and 12 again. New quarterback Tristan Spear in on this series for Alec Beatty to start second half. Spear back to pass. Pass protection going long. At Schoen at the midfield catches it. 40 yard line, 30 yard line, 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown. The East has scored and that folks is an 83 yard touchdown down play from Tristan Spear who goes deep and Dalton showing at a Blue Valley Northwest catches it and it's 20 to nothing East leads. Wow what a throw we talked about a young man in Tristan Spear from Troy a 2A school that is as good as a defensive tackle as he is quarterback but you see the strength in the perfect spiral that ball turned over in the air yet the coverage looked like it was pretty good but Dalton Schoen was able to concentrate, even with the defender near him, catch the football and fly down the field. We talked about his ability to catch the football in traffic when, with about 350 yards receiving in one game. He had guys all over the place, but he has a great ability to time it out, know when to go get the football, how to run underneath it. And it is a long 84-yard touchdown pass. Extra point is up it's good 21 nothing east leads west in the kansas shrine bowl what a home run pass that was just a fly pattern and a big big quarterback while getting hit fires the ball all the way down field and just out in front of sean newlick is dalton shown look at this throw and then watch shown kept running and the defender just looked up for a quick second, lost a little bit of momentum, and that was enough to get a couple of yards of separation. And Dalton Schoen has a touchdown reception. Remember, he had the big one where he's caught at the two. He was not going to be caught this time. He gets a touchdown, and his brother will be proud. His brother Mason plays basketball for Bruce Weber on Kansas State's basketball team. Well, 21 nothing. East comes out. West needed a stop, needed to get the football back. Instead, Harry Hester's guys come out with two plays. 82 yards it is 84 yards on the touchdown reception there was a big one last year in the all-star game that broke the previous record i'm trying to look that up and maybe i'll get that to you in a moment but uh, 21 nothing now east kicking off to west and now the deficit for the west team is three touchdowns return coming 30 yard line 34 yard line now the return from the west Chaden carter out of augusta and they'll put the West in pretty good shape. You know, special teams can turn this thing around for the West squad. And I was about to say if they could have a big punt return here or kickoff return, that might turn the table a little bit. But so far, the East has been solid offensively, defensively, and special teams, all three parts really working for the East right now. Well, we talked about the East and getting big plays. The West defense has been sound down after down, except for they've allowed the big passing plays. Now the East is 7-for-7 seven seven passing the football. 
Getting the snap for the West team. That's Hunter Knobloch. Knobloch moves forward for about five yards, moving from the 34-yard line up to about the 39-yard line. And Knobloch now really effectively the signal caller, though in this offense, the quarterback is called a tailback. Two fullbacks, a wingback. Split receiver, fullback up front. Here's Knobloch, who's got it, 40-yard line. And look at the East team making a stop again. Knobloch did a great job to get away from the would-be tackler, pick up about four yards. But the East team saw that play coming. They did, but he broke a couple of tackles, which gave them the chance to get to third and one. And I think now the West will be going for fourth down. They did it in the first possession of the game. Maybe that was a mistake or it did not work out that. well. Now down by 21 nothing. I think you're going to have to do it. But to answer your question, Mark, there was a pass one yard longer in Shrine Bowl history, an 85-yard touchdown pass. So this was not a not record, record long, but, ooh, but the East doesn't care. No, they don't. 21-0, and here's Burns. Burns trying to get to the 35-yard line. First mark, looks like the West is going to have it. First down at the 45-yard line. And that will be a first down. Let's go down to Katie Falco once again. Katie. All right, Jeff, I'm here with Jeff Souter. Uh, he's an Imperial officer for the Shriners Hospital. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved. Well, I've been a Mason since I was 19 years old and then got involved with the Shrine in Wichita. And once you see the special kids that we take care of and everything that goes on with making their lives better, it's pretty hard to get hooked pretty quick. And that's kind of what happened to me a long time ago. Let's talk a lot about these uh, patients. I was talking to you a little bit ago, and you said that they never have a bad day. No, I'm so fortunate. I, we have 22 hospitals, and we get the opportunity to go to a lot of the hospitals and see the kids. They come in for treatment. They love coming to our hospitals because they know it's, they get to see their favorite doctor, their favorite nurse, and they're going to get great care there and go home better. And we're so fortunate to get to be, work with these kids every day. And how proud are you of this event and the players and the cheerleaders or the band members and what they take away from this experience? Well, the Kansas Shrine Bowl is the big event in Kansas where we get awareness for what goes on with not only the fraternal side of the Shrine, but also Shriners Hospitals for Children. And when you're out here and you see all these great young athletes, and whether they're a cheerleader, a band member, or a, on the football team, it's well worth everything. They're great kids. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. Thanks we appreciate your time. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff Sauter, the Imperial officer, good to hear from him. Meanwhile, a catch was made by Sloan Baker which moved the chains forward for first down. He's that short side tight end. I said they need to get the football to him. He's from a pretty athletic family. Do you understand that his brother, Ron, is the Wichita State basketball player? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, Ron's playing in the Pan Am games right now in the United States. And, uh, How about the parents there? Uh, gosh, Shrine Bowl's a big deal. I can't, well, but, the Pan uh, Am games are a big deal. How can they be <laughs> at two places at once? Yeah, his parents are Renee and Neil Baker, his sister Audrey. There's a, this call is coming back. Wes had, uh, just had a holding call. It's going to bring it back, but Sloan Baker had the catch to move the chains forward, and Sloan Baker looks a lot like his brother Ron. At 108 tackles defensively with four interceptions coming in, playing offense is tied in for the West team. Sloan Baker from Scott Community, a 3A school, is a pretty good football player. His brother's a pretty good basketball player. Well, guess what? He's going to go to college at Butler County to play baseball. I guess they can play every sport. <laughs> they really can. And Scott Community's been such a great uh, community over the years. In recent years, in fact, one year won football, basketball, wrestling, I think track. Here's Holden, kept Colton Howe looking for a receiver. Had one for a moment, and the catch is made. 15-yard line on a long first down play, and it's going to be a first down. The West team, without a doubt, just put together their biggest highlight of the ball game. And what a pass and a catch downfield. The catch was made by Lane Bieberly out of Central Plains, and he's an eight-man player. 28-yard pass reception, and watch Bieberly go to work. Comes inside, busts it out, says I'm open, but continues to run, and what a nice catch. Good concentration. Two defenders squeeze him, but he makes a perfect fingertip catch, and the West is down inside the 15, the deepest penetration of the game. There's Burns, 14-yard line, 10-yard line. Moves forward, still on his feet, 7-yard line. Pick up of 7 yards on first down on a direct snap. Nice blocking up front by that offensive line for the West squad. Burns made it look easy for him. Ball is pushed to the seven-yard line. Well, that's what they need is a little momentum. One great catch. And Stan, they're getting to the line of scrimmage a lot quicker than they were in the first half. Yeah, they're not a no-huddle system, so they are huddling up. It'll be hard for them to change from that, but they can get in and out of the huddle quickly. 
Second down, ball at the seven. First down marker, rest of the four. Here's Knobloch. Five yard line, tried to reach forward, was really patient about it, and then a flag flies at the end of it. There was a lot of contact on the end of it. Wyatt Hendricks among the East players on the tackle, and at the end of that tackle, the flags flew. Well, there's a, could be another holding call against the West, and remember, you mentioned it at the half, new officials. And like a baseball umpire creating a strike zone, the umpire near the offensive lineman determines what the game is going to be called, what's going to be holding and what's not. And the offensive lineman and defensive lineman, linebackers, they all get used to it and they understand. But now they've been set in a certain way of how they play in the first half and there weren't any holding calls. And now all of a sudden in the second half, you got a new guy evaluating. It's like putting an umpire in midway through a baseball game and starting to call the pitches. You know there'd be a few batters and pitchers and catchers upset with strikes and ball calls. But this time, there's a penalty thrown. There's been a lot more penalty flags here early in the second half than there were in the whole first half. See the reaction of the east sideline. The ball is rest at the seven yard line. And uh, all appearances looks like it's going to be on the east squad, but though the officials are about to mark it off. Mike Simpson is the referee on this second half east team. Meanwhile, on the west squad. Maybe a chop block type of situation. Defenders cannot dive into the knee or lower. Uh, to, to chop into an offensive player. Dangerous play. Yeah, the holding call, again, the West squad being called for holding, and the offensive line just need to get used to how this umpire is going to call the game in a second half. Second down and five, ball at the nine-yard line. Inside, close to the five-yard line. It looks Another like the ball popped loose. East thinks they've got the football, and they do. It's East football. West fumbles inside the 10-yard line. The East team defensively comes up with it. Looks like Charlie White out of Shawnee Mission East comes up with the football for the East team. The West finally gets into scoring territory, their first time entering the red zone. But we've seen tonight Tyler Burns has lost the football two other times, but they said he was down before the ball came loose. He fumbles the ball again. It squirts off to the side. This time it's called a fumble, and Charlie White recovers the fumble. First down and 10, the East team from their own six-yard line, up 21 to nothing. This give, looks like uh, Beatty's going to keep a 10-yard line, moves forward to 13. He's pretty fast, Beatty. And uh, boy, can you imagine how effective he's going to be? McAllister College is located near St. Paul. It's going to be a Division Three football. And from all appearances, I talked to his dad this morning, and he said that he's very likely going to be the starter. So he's very rare. Do you go out of high school and you walk in and you're the starting quarterback? His dad's name Bod Beatty. His mom's name Stacy. He says uh, the ball's going to be handed to him when he shows up on campus in a couple of weeks. There's Beatty, 15-yard line, moves forward. First down, Mark arrests at the 16, and it looks like Beatty got just beyond that, so it appears the East team will pick up a first down. Look at the center right there. You get a chance here to see Blake Richmeyer come off, and he's played a great football game, but the center for the East is number 34, Jake Rainier. That's right, number 34. Not a big 60 number. number. He is a big, he's the biggest number 34 I've seen in a <laughs> long time since Craig Hayward well, of the New Orleans Saints. Well, he's stretching that jersey out a little bit. First down and 10, ball at the 17-yard line. And there's Beatty, scrambles out of trouble. Now rolling and does the wise thing. He throws the ball out of bounds, but he was hit right near the sideline. The whistle blows and so does the flag. And this is going to be a penalty on the West team. Beatty, meanwhile, gets up, smiles. He's not hurt. But uh, this foul is going to go on the West team. Roughing the passer, they're saying that Beatty was hit late. He was just scrambling out, trying to throw the ball away, incomplete. And the West makes a mistake. There's a rollout from Beatty. He was uh, under pressure from Sheldon Schmidt, the 6'4", 230 pounder out of lacrosse, who's going to play at Fort Hayes State. I wouldn't really criticized Sheldon Schmidt on, Schmidt on that play. I mean, he, it was so close to him. He was. And uh, he, like his teammates, Stan, trying to make a play for the West team. He, you start to press a little bit. You're down three touchdowns. You think you're capable of making a play, maybe single-handedly making a big one to give your team a little momentum. That's probably the case there. I mean, I don't think he got his helmet to helmet or anything like that. That was a very close call. Ball to 32. This pass caught by Dawson Swinehart from Linden. He's been called as the team's punter and kicker and 
guess what? He can play wide receiver as well. He wants to be a local volunteer firefighter, does Dawson Swinehart. That's what he does when he's not playing football and uh, certainly falls in the foots of another uh, guy from Linden that you'll be familiar with, Nick Walsh. This Nick Walsh is his idol. Punter. Punter out of uh, K-State punter. Second down and seven, ball at the 35-yard line. Three receivers to the near side for the East team who's already got one first down on this drive. This time, this is Barksdale. Barksdale hasn't had the football for at least the second half. Haven't needed him. 41-yard line, pickup of about five yards. Can we have a short third down situation? You can see why the East is running the football. Look at the center to the right side of the line. Notice there's some big old boys. They've yep. done a nice job of powering off the line of scrimmage all night long. Uh, worth mentioning, four all-state first teamers on the offensive line for the East Squatters. Barksdale, Barksdale moves forward, moves the defensive line forward to the West team. Backwards a couple of steps, out to the 44-yard line, first down and 10 for the East Squad. Look at the East. They're quickly back to the line of scrimmage. They want to add on to this three-touchdown lead. Big number 77, a right guard is Joey Farron. And right tackle is Charles Mayfield. Three receivers set, near side. Beatty is the quarterback, single receiver, far side. First down and 10, 44-yard line. They give us to the back. In the ball game, Brett Osborne. Brett Osborne's out of Wellsville. He's only 5'8", 160 pounds. He's going to Emporia State. But uh, he was the 156-pound class state bench press champion. So he looks small in size, but that is one strong kid there. Lost helmet. Takes Evan Spiker out of the game. Second down and eight among the receivers. Ray, Ryan Rakestraw is in the ball game as a receiver for the E squad. As Harry Hester continues to rotate his troops, blitz is coming. Good block, picked up the blitz. Past the outside was Dawson Swinehart. Got away from him, but the West was bringing some pursuit that time. They brought the blitz, and the protection was there. Stop the presses. That is officially an incomplete pass. Well, that was Finally, the first one. Because the one that could have occurred ended up being a 15-yard late hit. Oh, so officially, yeah. it's not incomplete. Right. That is our first incompletion by the East. The coaches are wondering, what? We're used to getting about 30 <laughs> yards every pass play on average. Yeah, 625, third quarter, mark it down. The East has thrown their first incomplete pass of the ball game. Still with a spread look. This is an empty house backfield. Five receivers for the East team. West is showing blitz and they just drew him off sides. They're, again, Harry Hester says, let's do a double count there. They draw the West off sides and it looks like it's going to be a free five yards. And you may wonder, looking at the replay, that the offense didn't appear to move at all. So let's watch this play. Watch the replay. Number 87 right there, Braden Burlow. Burlew steps into the neutral zone. That's a penalty in high school football. In college of the pros, the offense would have had to react to get a penalty, or if the defense would have come back to oh, their yeah. onside, you could still continue on with a snap count. But in high school, it's all over. You get in in that neutral zone, five-yard penalty. Great, uh, great call there. That's an uh, interesting point. Third down and three for the East team. 21-0 is our score. East team is ready to snap the football. Quarterback has been Alec Beatty this series, though the second half, the East team started with Tristan Spear, and all he did was throw that long touchdown pass. But remember the goal line? They put in number 15, Levi Wyrick. This man's going to go to Pitt State as a quarterback. He's in right now. I and think. as a track athlete, they had him as their short yardage specialist. So he's right. in. Remember they snapped the ball at the goal right. line. He tried to run straight ahead, but it, the ball went slightly above his head and through his hands. So Levi Wyrick is a two-time state discus champion when he's not playing quarterback. Gets, gets the ball and moves forward for about three yards. He's going to be short of the first down marker. The mark as I sh show it, and it's right along the line from our press box. So I got a great look at it. It's about a half yard short, which is going to bring up fourth down. But hey, the East is back on it. They're going to go for it. Will they go fast? Or try to pull the West offside That here. means it's another quarterback sneak if they go quick. There's Wyrick under center. Fourth down. Wyrick has it. Boy, he had to go to the turf first down. Did he not drop that on the turf? Wyrick, who had that fumble early on, or the snap was over his head is what it was, but, but uh, he kind of bobbled that for a second, still ends up getting the first down. Yeah, he had to control the football, which meant the delay allowed him to look where the hole was. What a compliment to the East defensive line, I mean, East offensive line, that they were able to give him that much time untouched. He stood there for a second, almost like it's a quarterback draw, and said, oh, okay, I'll just run over here to the left, and <laughs> makes an easy quarterback sneak run. First down and 10, third first down for the East team. Give 
to the tailback, and here's another running back, Derek McGreevy, who's been the team's linebacker in the ball game. Baseball and football is what Derek McGreevy is going to do next year at Washburn University, but as a football and basketball player, he was a first team all state pick in both sports. So McGreevy running the football and uh, Levi Wyrick at quarterback, east up three touchdowns and moving the football in this series. His brother, TJ, played in the 2009 Shrine Bowl. Huh. So he's going to be able to tell his brother, hey, I ran the football and played linebacker. <laughs> Second down, we'll call it seven, ball at the 42 yard line. Now, Wyrick this time moves forward to the 40 yard line, pick up of a couple of yards. So McGreevy's in the ball game. Taylor Watkins out of Columbus, who uh, really is a backup linebacker, is in playing offense for the East team. And uh, Tony Barksdale Jr. just replaced him. But the East team is kind of rotating it around, letting some guys play. Up three touchdowns, which is, you know, you got 34 guys on a side. They're all uh, mostly two-way players in high school. Look at the whole East lineup, if you can, real quickly. Scan your eyes. Are there any guys who aren't thick and strong? Well, they really are. They're, that is a really good-looking team. Here's Wyrick. Wyrick needs to get to the 35. He's met at the 40 and pulled down. What a play by Dakota Wolf out of Bueller, the linebacker who's headed to Hutchinson Community College next year, makes the play at the 40-yard line to bring up a fourth down play. Uh, worth mentioning on your point, Stan, about the, the East team. The East lost a lot of players, players who were originally selected. In my discussions with uh, Coach Hester this morning, he thought he had lost off his list at least 11 players. And then this week, uh, two of the players who he thought were going to be in camp ended up not in camp. And so he ended up replacing those. I mean, you got to admire the, considering all that, the coaching job that that E-Squad has done. Well, they've done a great job. And I think the key is, is how they've got the football team to come together. And that's the biggest goal, I think, for Shrine Bowl coaches. The, the highest definition of the likelihood of winning is, did we get our team to play as a team rather than a group of all-stars? And the East has been preaching that all week long that they have bought in. And I don't know who made the selection originally or who made the substitute selections, but they obviously had a plan. Let's get the thickest boys we can find. Because yeah, there's a quarterback out there in Alex, Alec Beatty, who is a smaller, athletic, outside looking guy. But most of these guys, look how wide they are. Yeah, that's, They're that's wide shouldered, uh, thick, players it's a physicality that the east has brought to this ball game and which is uh, what the west has been known for forever at least in the last the decade let's talk about that selection process a little bit for the shrine bowl the nomination list of players is 400 to 500 seniors it's sent to the media selection committee consisting of about 60 to 70 media personnel including all the daily print media the selected electronic media from radio and tv the selected larger area weekly newspapers although the voters select 22 players including two players from schools that play eight-man football the results are tabulated to select the first 22 players for each squad and then once they're got to get to that point the shrine bowl coaching staff steps in plus one assistant coach from each of the five Kansas football classifications. They make sure 6A through 2-1A is represented. Eight-man coaches represent every classification. So it is an extensive process, uh, and the, the goal is to represent football in the state of Kansas, and they do a great job every year. Fourth down play coming up is fourth down and five, 3.28 to go in the third quarter. Beatty, the quarterback, is back in. Tony Barksdale, Jr., behind him. Four receivers set. West needs the football back here. Beatty gives it to Barksdale. Barksdale tries to run out. He's going to be brought down. The West team steps up. Barksdale trying to slip by the front line, but the linebackers are having no part of it. As in on the stop for the West team, Blake Richmeyer, the linebacker, makes the stop, and the West team will take over. Earlier in the game, on a third and very long, they ran a draw, and this time they do it again. Number 30, Blake Richmeyer is there to read the play strong enough to hold on to the running back didn't allow him to bounce off or give him a forearm shiver and a stop for no gain gives the west the football so blake richmeyer who's had a nice game for the west squad so far playing really a football basketball and track star at bueller high school and headed to butler next year and the west team will take over west needs to get a score here if they have a chance here clock's moving 310 left here in the third quarter Tyler Harris among those. Big play by Blake Richmeyer, but the East is still going to be very happy. They used a lot of clock in the third quarter, 
driving the football down the field. They're the only team to score here in the third quarter. So the West really need to make something happen right away. They drove the football in the red zone, but a turnover cost them, and the clock is running down. So it becomes a critical drive here. Powell on the rollout, trying to pass, and he is surrounded by East players. And now the stop for the East, Ned Bingaman, a shiny mission south. The son of Molly and Dan Bingaman got to the quarterback after uh, just very little time and uh, makes the sack. Big number 74 might have been the one to make first contact, but there is all kinds of pressure on the roll to the right, getting upfield. The defender was right in his face, turned him inside, and there is a group of guys led by Bingaman, another player, number 74, that's going to Pitt State. Third down, 15. West needs a play here. West converted on a really long play, just our last series, but was unable to score. We'll have to come up with a similar play here. Howe looking for a screen play, and the East has it sniffed out. East is going to make the play on the play. Thatcher Horak, the cornerback out of Rossville, on the stop and handed to the East team. They were not fooled again. Trying to get a little misdirection and get a screen to the left, but Everyone is staying in their area for the East. They're believing in every other player, and this time it's Thatcher Horak. Horak was on the right side, just stayed tight. When the play came his way, he made the tackle in his last football game. That will be a play he remembers. He's going to Washburn to play baseball. West going to punt this one away under pressure. Nice punt. Terrific punt from Tyler Harris inside the 20-yard line all the way down to 11. What a punt by the West team. In fact, the West fans here give it to Tyler Harris at Andover Central, who in addition to a 63-yard punt, was also a regional champion as a sports writer in competition with fellow high school sports writers in the state of Kansas. How about that? Sports writing championships. And there, I didn't know they had that. Me either. But, How but fun would that be? That would be great. Love to compete in that. But he is a champion in that, and nice punt. East team, meanwhile, takes over. One minute, 12 seconds to go in the third quarter, 21-0. It was 14-0 at halftime. Both of those touchdowns came from Tony Barksdale, Jr., and the East team added a touchdown on a long play and a long catch from Dalton Schoen. There's Beatty back to the 10-yard line. Line scrimmage at the 11. It's going to be a one-yard loss. West team makes a nice play in there. Well, the West defense has got to help out the offense. Either they need to stuff them right here, force a punt and give their offense great field position to take advantage of that 63 yard punt or get a turnover right here get a very short field a quick touchdown would put them right back in the game with Carlos Taylor in on the play for the West team second down and 11 East has been in a hurry to get to the line of scrimmage this time um, patient here's Barksdale Jr. makes a nice move 15 yard level uh, 10 yard line up to the 12 he was wrapped up from behind in on the stop for the West team, looks like Blake Richmeyer once again. Great ball security. That could have easily been a fumble. When you watch football plays, when the first guy makes contact with the running back, like Tony Barksdale Jr., and then the second guy that he doesn't see hits him hard at the same time from behind, that's often when you see a fumble occur. That was a hard blow by two different guys. You see he is slow right now and doesn't seem to be lining up in formation. Third down play, third and eight for the East team. And there's the end of the quarter. East team comes out, first scrimmage, first uh, series in the third quarter, opens up with a long touchdown play and takes a 21-0 lead. You're watching the 42nd Annual Kansas Shrine Bowl from Fort A. State University. Return in a moment. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. A Shriners Hospital for Children. Love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. Summer's almost here and there's never been a better time to buy a pre-owned vehicle from Mel Hamilton Ford. Right now we've got a great selection of vehicles priced under $12,000. We have over 50 cars to choose from. You won't have to settle for a vehicle that doesn't fit your needs. Every vehicle on our lot goes through a rigorous inspection process and not everything makes the cut. So you'll have peace of mind buying your next pre-owned vehicle. 
Come out today and check out our selection of vehicles priced under $12,000 or shop us online 24 hours a day at mhford.com. At Mel Hamilton Ford, we're better, we're proving it. You be the judge. Watching TV the way you want all starts with having the right connections. Cox High Speed Internet and Cox TV. At home, you get access to the fastest in-home Wi-Fi to stream seamlessly on multiple devices. Away from home, you can access more than 300,000 Wi-Fi hotspots, so you can watch a variety of TV shows online or by downloading your favorite TV network apps. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com slash learn. Credit King Auto Sales at the King's Corner, 31st South and Broadway, Wichita, is Kansas' largest buy here, pay here dealer. The best selection, priced from $3,000 to $30,000. When the banks and new car lots tell you no, the King can help. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. Credit King Autos. See us at GoCreditKing.com. Well, nothing more beautiful than a sunset in western Kansas. The sun is setting on haze. But is it send the setting on the West team? West team trying to rise to the occasion. Meanwhile, East squad, third down and eight on their own 12-yard line, up three touchdowns on the West squad, trying to pull what would be their first victory in Hayes in three previous tries here, up three touchdowns. Beatty, the quarterback for the East team, has carried the lion's share of the damage, and that pass is complete caught. First down for the East team, and running that pattern to perfection, Dalton showing the wide receiver at a Blue Valley Northwest comes through once again. Good comeback route by Sean and a perfect throw by Alec Beatty. Beatty has the protection, fires the ball outside away from the linebacker. You see number one sitting there in a position thinking he might get an interception, but the ball was thrown away from him and a nice catch on the sideline by Dalton Schoen, who has five receptions for 100 and 70 yards. Well, Beatty's showing what composure he has. He's played a lot at quarterback for Topeka High School, a three-year starter on a Trojans team that ended up holding a share of the Centennial League, three years running. And here's Beatty inside, going to keep it. Moves forward to the 30-yard line, tripped up at about the 31-yard line. And the East can afford to run the football and let the clock move. And they've been very effective at it so far. Worth noting through the first three quarters, both teams had 31 rushing carries apiece. East has 74 yards, West 78. The difference is the big plays by the East passing game. The West just has not had those tonight. Second down here, ball is at the 30-yard line for Beatty and Barksdale, the Topeka tandem, which has really ruled the night here in Hayes, Kansas. On a second down and five is Beatty, play action, looking downfield, has shown, and the pass is going to be knocked down, nearly intercepted that time. West did a nice job, saw it coming, and in fact, downfield, number 27 defending, that's Dalton Goodwin, he's out of Abilene, made a nice play, he's headed to Bethany College, where he'll play next year, and Dalton Goodwin, he did the job, he saw showing coming, he didn't get him, let him get behind him. He made a nice read, almost pulled that interception in. Notice he's wearing 27, which uh, certainly follows because his idol is NFL Packer Jordy Nelson, wears 87, but wore 27 in college. Isn't Jordy Nelson a relative of yours? He is. I, I always brag about him, but he never brags I about me. I thought you were the most famous guy in your family, <laughs> but I want to say no, far, not far even distant, Far, no, not even, not even close. Third down and three for the East team. Ball at the 30-yard. We'll call it third down and four. 11-10 to go in the ball game. 21-0 East. Play action. Pass caught. 35-yard line and tripped up. Pass caught by Brett Osborne. Osborne, normally a running back, comes out of the backfield, makes the play, and the guy who played Wellsville baseball catches the pass and a first down for the East. Nice throw right at the first down marker and a catch behind him. What a nice job of reaching back to make that catch and pull it in for the first down. Boy, Osborne is... With any other East team, he'd probably be the starting running back. But with Tony Barksdale Jr., he's kind of had to play a reserve role here. But what he's done has been effective so far. Beatty with Tony Barksdale Jr. behind him. Spread look once again on a first down and 10. 45-yard line. This time Barksdale is stopped. And defensively, that was A.J. Cooper out of Cimarron who makes the play inside. 
Okay, oh. Mr. Mark Ewing, everyone's yelling at their television right now saying, why doesn't Stan ask him how he's related to Jordy Nelson? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm third cousin. Okay. So uh, they tell me that's... Uh, we couldn't let that go. So, yeah, my, wondering, like, so my mom and uh, Jordy's grandfather lived on adjacent farms in Riley, and they are first cousins. So we're third cousins. So you've been up at the Jordy Nelson restaurant. I have been. Have. Nelson's Landing, been there. And... Uh, Got to watch him grow up a little bit. And you taught him a lot. I didn't teach him a thing. <laughs> I can tell you that. Here's uh, Tony Barksdale Jr. Dances forward, 40-yard line. Still's got a 41-42 yard line. Tony Barksdale Jr. is going to play football at Butler next year. He's uh, really outstanding, isn't he? And he may play at a Division I school after that. Yeah, he may. He, you know? lo he looks like he may have the capability of doing that. You got to work hard to Kansas Junior College. Colleges are very good. The competition is pretty unreal. And the whole nation, from a Division I perspective, comes around this area to look for the athletes, they try do. to get them to come to their schools. It's not just the local schools that look at a guy like this. And uh, he, if he continues to develop past the excellence that he has now, he'll be playing for a Division I school. I think back. This, uh, this one of those games, the Kansas Shrine Bowl, that uh, we get to look at. You know, I cover a lot of high school football during the year, but I don't see all the kids. I get a chance to. We had got to look at Tony Barksdale Jr. in some football. He's hit hard at the 40-yard line. Again, another stop by A.J. Cooper out of Cimarron. 6'5 defensive end who will play his football at Fort A. State University. He makes back-to-back -back defensive plays. And as good as he is an athlete, A.J. Cooper earned a 30 on his ACT score. Talk about a smart kid. And Brendan Johnson there helping out, going to Butler County Junior College. And... Uh, 30 on ACT, it's pretty darn good. Boy, that is, that's really something. And uh, again, That's academic scholarship level, let me tell is, you. That is something, so. Not a full ride, but there, every dollar counts, especially with uh, parents who have kids in school knowing what tuition costs are sure. in college now. That's uh, remarkable. So the East team's gonna punt away here. Uh, worth mentioning, as we talked about the strength of the East special teams, boy, Dawson Swinehart has been tremendous. Special, look at this punt. Back of the 18-yard line is going to return from the West Squad. Looks like Willie Edwards. Edwards has tripped up and fumbles the ball out of bounds at the 20-yard line. The West is going to keep it, but downfield, again, East handles it defensively. Special teams making the play, and the West has a long ways to go. Down three touchdowns at 21 to nothing. Willie Edwards fortunate that that ball fell out of bounds because he was tripped up, was on the ground. He would not have been able to recover the football. There are no other West players around, so turnover a avoided. Willie Edwards is a cornerback, played at Wichita East, who is returning the football for the West. He is going to go to Illinois State to Maybe play football. He's getting a chance to play Division I football and at Illinois State. First down to 10 for the West squad, trying to get a little something going and a pickup of a couple of yards inside eight minutes to go. West trails the East by three touchdowns. And as Stan mentioned, hasn't been able to get the passing game going. And that's really been the difference between the two teams in this uh, all-star game tonight. Less than 50 yards passing from the West and compare that to the East who has only one incompletion all game long. Wow. And think about all the, the West talent that they've got. Hunter Knobloch who you're looking at presently. Tyler Burns, Colton Howe, second down and eight. This looks like Burns, Burns 30 yard line close to 35 and there's the burst of speed if you don't hit him out of the backfield and for the rare occasion here for the East team they didn't get a helmet or shoulder pad on Burns and Burns made him pay and he protected the football so well that time after having a fumble earlier he made sure that that ball was secure got both hands up there near it protected it all the way to the ground He's a smart player made a mistake fumbled earlier not going to let it happen again. First down and 10 for the West squad, 37-yard line. Here's Knobloch. Knobloch gets a block on the left side and moves forward to the 40-yard line, cross to the 42-yard line, pick up a five yards. Well, seven minutes left in the game. The West hopes that they can come back and win this game, but there's something else on the line as well, a little pride. You do not want to be shut out. The West side has only been shut out one time in the history of the Shrine Bowl. The first 41 games. Oh, my goodness. There was only one time when the West did not score a point. 1978, the East dominated 34-0. to Well, Harry Hester's East team has a chance to make a little history and only winning in Hayes in the heart of Western Kansas. And what a stop, another East stop. 
making the play. Taylor Watkins out of Columbus, his helmet came flying off. He's gonna have to leave for a play, but no gain on the play on third down for the West team. We also need to pick our MVPs for the end of the ball game. He said, I didn't lose my helmet on this one. I had it pulled off. Let's see what happened. I'm trying to find 25 there. Yeah, the oh, yeah. 20, the 22 back. was uh, Chayden Carter. Kind of pulled it off his back. Caught him underneath his elbow there. Pulled it off. Because he wants to go back in the ball game. He knows if you lose your helmet, you got to sit out. Third down and seven for the West team. Knobloch on the rollout. Under pressure. Switches direction. Comes to the near side. Still under pressure. And he's going to be brought down finally by the East squad's Ben Ewing, the defensive lineman of St. Thomas Aquinas, the first team All-State selection, who had 126 tackles for St. Thomas Aquinas, brings down a, really a team pursuit from the East squad. He thought about wrestling in college at a Division I school, but he's found out that he loved football too much. He's the guy that showed up with shoulder pads and helmet on at a meeting where the coaches said, bring them with you. There was a Shriner who came to speak to the team and again, he had his full uniform on. He's all about football, and he's going to play it at Fort Hayes State next year. Nice punt. West is going to down this one at about 25-yard line, 24. Still rolling down to the 23-yard line. Well, Can I say next year? That, that really isn't right when it's only like two weeks away. It is two reporting. weeks away. It does seem like it of the season. See, the first game of the next season. I kind of think of these kids of the as high school players. I, should, I guess you should say respects. this year. He's going to stay right here at Fort Hayes State. I don't know if he's even going to go home. He loves you know, football so much, he might just move right into the dorms and say and wait for the rest of his Fort Hayes State teammates. Well, you make an interesting point because uh, high school season ends in November. State championships are the Saturday after Thanksgiving. There's been a lot of occasions where we they, they list their weight at the end of their high school senior season, and then we're playing several months later. We had several players who show up. They've been lifting. They're, they're 20 pounds heavier than they were in their last game of their senior season. There's a lot of development between November and this game in July. East team, Tristan Spear, the quarterback, now in for the East. Tony Barksdale Jr. is behind him, and Spear on the option takes it out. He's gonna be wrapped up, brought down. They're trying to throw the ball deep, and we know the big man can heave the ball downfield, but not when you got defenders hanging all over you. Good pass rush by the West defense. So I'm going to make my MVP picks here while we have a chance. We get a ballot, and they always ask for our ballot because we get we, we're two we're like worth two votes here. So Tony Barksdale Jr. would be uh, the obvious for the East team. Well, not obvious. Well, could the don't East forget team, about Dalton Schoen. Yeah, Dalton Schoen and uh, Beatty did a great job. So uh, uh, three got, different get, guys oh, that man, could easily. Really could, how about and hey, win? how about every defensive player? Every everyone East. This is this is a shutout so far. How about the and uh, that's the only drama remaining. Inside five and a half minutes to go in the Shrine Bowl. 21 nothing East leading. Second down and 15. How about for the West team MVP? It would probably be Blake Richmeyer, the linebacker. Yeah, Done a very he, nice yeah, job. A great job. I think you're right on that. Here's Barksdale. Barksdale 20, close to the 25 yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's go down to Katie Falco. I like the last name that Ben has, Katie. Can you ask him about it? Maybe we're related. Yes, and so I'm here with Ben Ewing, which is Mark Ewing, uh, who's doing our play-by-play -play up there. That's his last name, so he, he thinks that's pretty cool. But Ben, right now, <laughs> score is 21 nothing. How are you guys shutting down this West offense? Um, we've just been disciplined with our actions, and we've been going by a quote, I am. It's not all about me. And uh, we're just doing what the coaches tell us to. And uh, I hear that you're a very hard worker. You showed up the first or second day um, to a meeting in your pads and your helmet. Yeah, I was all ready to go. And you're going to be here at Fort Hayes State this upcoming season. How cool is it to get to play out on this field before? It's very cool. Uh, it's a blessing to be able to make a first impression on my coaches that believed in me for football. And uh, I'm blessed. All right, then I know you got to get out there. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk right, to us. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Yeah, Ben Ewing had two wrestling losses in two years. Decommitted from Iowa State, as Ben talked about, because he wanted to play football, and Ben Ewing is on campus. So 21 nothing is our score, 407 to go, and number 44 on defense for the East squad has done a nice job. Could be among those considered for MVP honors. You got a lot of heroes on the East side, as the East is about to punt this away, but not in a hurry. Time moves to 350. Only drama left in this ball game at the moment. Is the West going to be shut out? Can the East defense preserve the shutout over the West squad? 
to be a historic win here. Again, the series has been dominated in the decade and in recent years by the West team. Return coming. 50-yard line, nice block, 40, 30-yard line, 25, 20, 10. Inside the 10 the 8-yard line, what a return by Javon Burst. Burst got a block back at the 45-yard line, and big-time drama as the West team now has a real opportunity to score the short field situation here. Great job by Javon Burst. The West still searching for a big play, searching for the first score, and the punt return unit gives them a chance Scott Mosier believes in special teams, works on it a lot, even in an all-star game setting. And what a killer block to set up that return. Guys being knocked all the way to the ground legally. Gives the West the football down at the six. First down and goal at the six-yard line. Here's Colton Howe. Howe trying to make a move. He's been tripped up right down at the 10-yard line. And look who's there for the East team. Isaiah Macklin out of Shawnee Mission West, a cornerback wide receiver, kick and punt returner for his high school team, makes the stop. And uh, not scoring yet. Clock's moving inside three minutes to go. I, I think the East knows they're trying to get that, keep that zero on the scoreboard. They're going to give it everything they've got here. Meanwhile, Colton Howell and his West teammates would love to find the end zone if they can do it right here. This time, empty house backfield. There's a fullback up front. Here's Colton Howe. Howe, back to pass, looking for a fade route. Now keeps it, looks to the far side. Now the near side has a receiver ball knocked away and complete. He was looking for Tyler Burns in the end zone defensively. There was Isaiah Macklin again. Macklin, who made a nice tackle in the last play, knocks that ball away and makes a nice defensive play. Isaiah Macklin has not decided yet if he's going to play football in the junior college level or go play to give up football go to school, and go back to a place he lived for six months, Hawaii. Oh, is that right? Huh. Ah, do I want to go back to choice. Hawaii or do I want to play football? Now, that is a hard decision. Ah. Knocking that football away may make him think, I like football. But I tell you what, when he goes home tonight, I'm sure he's going to think about Hawaii one more time. So the ball is at the 10-yard line. Third down and goal at the 10. Timeouts called. West wants to talk about it. West wants to score here. East leads. 21 to nothing. In 1974, the East beat the West 16 to 14. That was the very first Kansas Shrine Bowl, and that was played at Memorial Stadium at the University of Kansas. In its early years, the game rotated between K-State, Kansas, and Wichita State. But in the last nine years, the game has been hosted by one of the four Division II football schools in the state of Kansas, moving from Washburn to Pittsburgh State to Emporia State, and now Fort Hayes. This 42nd edition rolling into Hayes with another lineup. I think you've enjoyed it, featuring the best in the best in state in Kansas. Now, that's the Shrine Bowl All-Stars. In fact, over the years, has been a who's who of high school football in Kansas. And we're continuing, in fact, ending another chapter tonight. Among those players that have played in this ball game, Paul Kaufman, Gary Spaney, Mike Bell, Les Miller, Barry Sanders, Mark Sumino, Monty Beisel, Terrence Newman, Darren Sproles, we talked about Jordy Nelson, B.J. Finney, Cody Whitehair, lineman for K-State this year, Ben Heaney, linebacker for KU last year, and a guy named Stan Weber who played in this All-Star game. All those notables, and we haven't even talked about all the coaches yet that have been in this ball game over the years. And they've had a great influence on these young men, and so often they talk about their Shrine Bowl coaches many years after the game. Here's Burns, Burns 10 yard line, and he is gonna be brought down on a third down play. Fourth down's gonna come up, the ball shook loose, but out of bounds. This is that little double pitch, a little handoff and pitch play, and there was a greater delay between the handoff and the pitch is why there was a, somewhat of an opening to the outside, but still 10 yards away from scoring. So a good play by the defense, and no thought of the field goal to just get away from a shutout. The West is gonna go for fourth down here with two minutes left and the clock running. Clock's running inside two minutes to go. We take a look at Joel Spain for the East squad out of Free State. Student body vice president. Gonna head to Cal, he's gonna play baseball. His last football game right here. Fourth down play and the last opportunity for the West team to score in this ball game. Howell, back to pass. Looking to the end zone, he's got a receiver and it's gonna be incomplete. Incomplete and it looks like the East team is secured a shutout. 
It was intended in the end zone for Hunter Knobloch. Well defended by the East team in the end zone. And the East squad already starting to celebrate. That's defensive coaches over there. They wanted the shutout. And the West had the football at the seven yard line following the return by Javon Burse. And the East team manages to keep the West out of the end zone. And they got two things here that they can do. They can get a shutout against the West for only the second time in the history of the Shrine Bowl. You go all the way back to the fifth game ever played in the Shrine Bowl when the East shut out the West 34 to nothing. That 34 point win margin by the East is the largest separation they've ever had in the history of the game. This would be the second largest victory by the East in the 42 years. So the East with the football chance to run out the clock. Meanwhile, this has a very been a very pro West crowd, of course, because we're in Hayes. Then they know who their West guys are. And meanwhile, the East sideline. Interesting that the way that the field sets up East is to the East and the West is to the West. West team dressed on the West side. Same for the East team and and uh, the state understands the pride of high school football in their respective area of the state. Don't These kids want to win. I mean, you you it is very easy to understand how athletes who are the best or any athlete wants to win. But these all star players, they want to win this ball game. They know it's about the kids, but they also want to have the pride of getting a victory with the buddies who are their teammate for just one game. Levi Weirich moves it forward for a couple of yards. Look like again, Levi Weirich uh, had to go down to the turf to pick up the football off of it. He looks like Tim Tebow wearing a Fresno State well, uniform. He sure does, doesn't he? He's got that sort of upright that 15 stature. that he wore in Florida. That's exactly what I was thinking when he got up there. That Fresno State Bulldog. 43 seconds. The clock is stopped at the moment in what is a 21 nothing East advantage. The East scored a couple of touchdowns in the first half. In fact, the East first drive of the ball game came from the West 38 after the West team was stopped on a fourth and one. That led to a Tony Barksdale Jr. seven yard run. And then later on, Tony Barksdale scored another one. This off a pass to make it 14 nothing with 6.02 to go in the second quarter. And the East team took a 14 nothing lead to halftime. And then came out in the third quarter, the first drive. Tristan Spear inserted a quarterback, found Dalton showing for an 84 yard touchdown pass. And that's our scoring. So you hear from Mike Simpson. Meanwhile, the East team just wants to eat up the clock here. 40 seconds and counting. Going into the victory formation here. East team looking at the clock. Levi Weirich in at quarterback. Got three backs right behind him. And the East team doing what you want to do. Just wind up the clock here. And Levi, did he just now have to go down the turf again for the ball? Having a hard time just picking the ball up, but uh, did what he's supposed to do. Last few seconds of this 42nd annual Kansas Shrine Bowl. Harry Hester with a hug for his assistant coaches, and the players celebrate with their fans. East has defeated West, and in fact has shut out the West team 21 to nothing to win the 42nd annual Kansas Shrine Bowl at Fort Hayes State University. The East team, which got together for its 10 to 14 team practice, realized that at least two of its roster members would not arrive. And since the naming of the Shrine Bowl All-Stars had to replace at least nine players. But Harry Hester and his assistants, Walt Alexander, Blake Pierce, Bob Campbell of Fort Scott, Brad Burkdahl of Wellsville, and Chris Schmidt of Olpe came up with an offensive and defensive scheme and added some special teams expertise to end up shutting out the West team 21 to nothing. Defense wins football games. A lot of coaches will tell you about that. Even in today's style of football, we're seeing more scoring, more yardage, more wide open football at the high school, college, and pro level. Every coach will still say, if we play great defense, we are going to win ball games. And the East came out tonight with a front seven that was very, very physical. Then three more players to make 10 came up to the line of scrimmage against a single wing and said, we're so big and strong and disciplined. We're all going to hold our area, believe in each other, and play team defense, and you're not going to be able to crack through us. And that's the way it worked all night long. The East defense 
holds the West to a total of seven first downs and 136 wow. yards. The East defense set the tone. There's no way you're going to lose if you don't allow the opponent to score. They all could easily be MVP candidates. East team threw for 241 yards. We're 10 for 12 through the air with Beatty and Tristan Spear throwing the football for the East team. In fact, uh, Beatty threw for 84 yards. Spear, two for two for 89 yards. And that receiving core was Schoen, Freeman, Barksdale, Osborne. Schoen made five catches, had 169 yards and one touchdown. He had an 84 yarder and in a long reception of over 60 yards as well in the ball game. Any coach in the country would take 10 of 12 passing. So we talked about the East defense and then the East passing game uh, makes a big difference as well. Harry Hester's passing game so effective, averaging 24 yards per reception. So the most valuable player awards are being announced. And I think Katie, Katie is with the East MVP. Katie, go ahead and take it away. All right, Tony, second time in the history of the Kansas Shrine Bowl that you guys shut out the West team. What does that mean to you? Oh, man, it means a lot. You know, coming in this game, we plan to go 100%, and I feel like my team gave 100%, you know. What do you think sets this team apart? It seems like you guys really rallied together, and you knew what this was all about. Coming in, we talked about family, and, you know, we came in as 34 individuals. Coach said it's a family now, you know. We come from different schools, but we don't look at it like that. I feel like I've been playing with these guys all year. What has Coach Hester meant to you over the past week? Oh, man. Coach Hester, you know, he's been unbelievable, you know, working us, you know, just believing in us, and I thank him for that. And you are heading to Coffeyville next year. Yes, how excited are you, and how oh. good did it feel to wear your high school helmet one last time? Oh, man, you know, Coach Swift, I love him. He's a good guy, and I love playing on Shawnee Heights. So in Coffeyville, I'm excited. I can't wait. Tony, thank you so much, and congratulations on the big win tonight. Tony Barksdale, Jr., with an outstanding game, 19 carries, 66 yards. And he also threw that halfback pass through the air that caught the West unaware. And he's going to play some football next year. Do not be surprised you hear from him down the line. Word about Tony Barksdale, Jr., and perhaps your thought on him. A back who can do it all when you say that he can throw the football. He caught the screen pass. Broke a couple tackles, went all the way for 53-yard touchdown. But then just the physical tone of running the ball between the tackles and pounding on the defense was the way that the East wanted to set the tone behind that big offensive line. He did it, uh, had great ball protection, didn't turn over the football, and was involved in catching the football for a touchdown, throwing a long pass, and then running the ball. A very good performance by a nice back, Tony Barksdale, Jr. Meanwhile, the MVP looks like Blake Richmeyer of Holcomb, and he's with our Katie Falco. All right, Blake, a tough loss, but you know, at the end of the day, this was not about winning or losing. It was about all the patients of Shriners Hospital. How amazing of an experience has this past week been for you? It was amazing. I mean, we came out, we realized how really fortunate and blessed we are. Spending time with these kids was just, it was huge for us. It was huge to spend time with them, and it was an experience I'll, I'll never forget. It was something I'll remember for the rest of my life. And how has Coach Mosier helped you guys, you know, realize that this is bigger than the game of football? He is an amazing coach, but above that, he's an amazing man. He uh, coaches up in the game of football and the game of life, and it's something that I'll never forget. Been spending time with him, the other coaches, and the other players. And you're heading to Butler Community College next year. What are your expectations for yourself? I'm expecting to work hard and see what I can do after that. Um, I'm really excited to be with Coach Schaffner and the Butler, Butler squad. They've always had a great tr tr tradition of winning. I can't wait to be up there. All right, Blake, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And guys, back up to you. Thank you, Katie, and uh, a lesson in life and a real demonstration in athletics. The guys getting their picture taken. East champs have won the 42nd Kansas Shrine Bowl All-Star Game. Stan Weber and I will be back to wrap this thing up from Hayes in just a moment. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. A Shriners Hospital for Children. Love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. 
Spring brings new beginnings and new opportunities. Now you can get both at Briggs Buick GMC Manhattan. Start your day ahead in a 2015 Buick Encore for only $1.99 a month. Stay ahead with a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot and Encore is an IIHS top safety pick. Or drive a 2015 GMC Terrain with a spring opportunity price of only $1.99 a month. Spring is here and so are the savings at Briggs Buick GMC Manhattan. And for more specials, visit BriggsAuto.com backslash specials. My contour knows I'm into all kinds of TV, and no matter what I'm into right now, it's Enlightened App puts it right here. And here. It can even record up to six shows at once. So we all get what we want, like sci-fi, sci-fi, sci sci-fi, sci sci romantic comedies. Anyone? That's why contour is TV just for me. For the many sides of you, there's contour. The dictionary defines performance as the ability to perform. Here at Performance Tire and Wheel, we make sure that your vehicle is performing at its best. We're a family owned and operated business and the largest Cooper dealer in Northeast Kansas. For a limited time only, get up to a $70 Visa gift card when you buy a set of new qualifying Cooper tires, built not just for the way you drive, but the way you live. For routine maintenance, auto repairs, or a new set of Cooper tires, visit us at either of our two Topeka locations. East has won this Kansas Shrine Bowl in decisive fashion of the West team by a score of 21 to nothing. And Stan, you mentioned East de defense really set the table, but they had it in all three ways, offense, defense, and special teams. Yeah, they kept saying how they were a team, and Harry Hester sold that to his football team, and they did a nice job all night long passing the ball to efficiency, powering the ball. The offensive line was a big factor, avoided turnovers, avoided penalties, and the defense was just rock solid all game long so congratulations to the East uh, a nice win 21 and nothing you don't see shutouts in football very often only the second time the East has done it in the history of this game and they did it winning 21 to nothing tonight Stan I hope you mark your calendar for July 30th 2016 the 43rd annual Kansas Shrine Bowl game will happen at Emporia State's Welch Stadium enjoy working with you once again Stan well, I love working with you as well and I I don't know if there's anyone who loves football more than me, but my favorite shots of the whole night were every time we see one of those Shriner kids. Yep, yep. You saw all kinds of specials from the pregame, halftime, and other times you hear from them, you see them. Isn't it awesome, their attitude? How can that not bring joy? And it that is. these football players, almost 70 young men, learned about how other people, maybe close to their age and a little bit younger, have such a smile on their face no matter what their situation is. It gives us players a whole different appreciation. Strong legs run so weak legs can walk. No matter what the score is, the Shrine Bowl again is a success for the 42nd time. I'm proud to be a Kansan and be a part of the Kansas Shrine Bowl. Me too. Thanks a lot, Stan. As we close the telecast, we wish to pass along our thanks to the Shriners of Kansas. Sarah Van Patten is the executive director. The event manager is Lindsey Kisling, and Natalie Johnson serves as the secretary. Fort A. State has been wonderful. University President Dr. Murdo Martin. Tigers athletic director is Curtis Hamicky. SID is Ryan Prickett. We also extend our thanks to the City of A's for their hospitality. Production has come courtesy of the Time Warner Sports Channel. Our producer director has been Joe Novacek. Our technical director has been Todd Kinsey. Once again, the final score, East 21, West nothing, though the true winners of all the games are the kids of the Shriners Hospitals. For Katie Falco, Leon Liebel, and Stan Weber, this is Mark Ewing saying thanks for watching the 2015 Kansas Shrine Bowl, and so long, everyone, from Hayes, America. So, what is love? Love is being independent. Love is dancing. A Shriners Hospital for Children. Love is a new smile. At Shriners Hospitals for Children, love is caring for a child regardless of the family's ability to pay. If you know a child that needs help, please call or go online today. have somewhere to be work school wherever we believe life's not about where you're going but how you get there no matter who you are or what you do there's a bike for that 
Big Poppy Bicycle Company in the heart of Aggieville. Caw Valley Bank has been helping Topeka families grow for over 140 years, guiding you at the beginning of the journey and setting up that first savings account, helping you with that first loan and explaining what exactly is in the fine print. From working to give you free checking to discounts on consumer loans, visit one of our eight conveniently located branches throughout Topeka or online at CawValleyBank.com. Caw Valley Bank, investing in our community. From your generation to the next we drive to work, to the big game, to a weekend with the girls, to our favorite destinations, to our families. We'll get you there and back home. If you ever drive the Kansas Turnpike, ever is enough. Order your free sticker K-Tag today at myktag.com to save on tolls and save on time.